Hey everyone, welcome to Modern Day Debate. I'm your moderator tonight, Justin. Tonight's topic is the Quran Scientific. We have Ozian discussing with Nadir on that exact topic. Uh, Nadir, the floor is all yours. Well, thank you. And thank you, Ozian, for agreeing to debate this topic. You know, a lot of people would not be sitting in Ozian's position. Um, in fact, so basically what happened is there's been a lot of discussions and debates on Quran and science and the atheists, you know, had a, it didn't go well for them. And now what we're finding is that people are from the atheist community from, as well as Christian, they're very reluctant in debating Quran and science. In fact, I can't even find anybody to debate this topic. And that's the first miracle of the holy quran is that it is emerging here on modern day debate as being something unchallengeable uh you could look at those people who have those big youtube channels they have tried to debate this topic and and it did not go well for them and and the evidence for that is now they have all basically withdrawn from trying to challenge the science of the quran and i'll just give you one example in my last debate with Matt Dillahante at 101.47, right around there, uh, when asked, how do you explain the scientific miracle of the Quran? They said, this is magic. That was from one of his own followers. They, even his own followers conceded that the Quran is supernatural. So what Ozian is doing here, he's just filling the void. He's filling the void left behind by the retreating atheists and apologists because it's because the Quran and science is going to do terrible damage to their careers, to their YouTube channels. And so he heard me mention this in my last debate. And so he's just doing damage control. He, he, he doesn't want this, uh, you know, this title of unchallengeability to go to the Quran and science. So what is this great uh, scientific miracle of the Quran? Well, there's one of which I'm going to discuss tonight is how the Quran corrects the scientific errors of the Bible. Now you say, okay, but Ozian is an atheist. He's not a Christian. Well, so what? It's just book A and book B. A man for uh, a man 1400 years ago shouldn't be correcting any book, shouldn't be presenting anything scientifically superior. So, so it doesn't matter if you're, if you're an atheist or not, it is still a miracle. And also, you got to understand, Christians are very, very careful on what topics they're going to debate. They are not going to participate in topics like uh, which challenges the scientific errors in their books because they know that their their answers, their apologetic responses are not convincing. So they're very careful. That's why I have to debate atheists, to be very honest with you. I want to, Bible debates, now most of my debates actually are with atheists. <laughs> because their Christians will not participate in those type of debates. Muslims will, though, and I think that's a great thing about Islam, because we have nothing to hide. Now, what is this great scientific miracle? Let's take a look at it. So this is misery. This is suffering, as you see on your screen. If you guys are watching, uh, uh, I'm sharing my desktop right now. Uh, so this is misery and suffering that you see on your screen. These are caused by the scientific errors of the Bible. However, what you are going to find is that Islam actually corrects these scientific errors. So the best way to illustrate that is by playing a little game. And uh, by the way, I'm, I'm going to go through this very quickly. I'm just going to give you a summary, and then we can go in more detail. But all my arguments, all my points, I have already submitted to Ozian, so he, he knows everything of what I'm talking about. So now this is very interesting. If, if we got to look at this. If Muhammad is not a true prophet, then that means he's copying out of the Bible. How do we know that? Because there's so many similarities between the two, like Moses parting the seas. That's found in both the Bible and the Quran. But in addition to that, we find the New Testament talks about mustard seeds, alcohol, washing hands, divorce, epilepsy, and meat consumption. Well, surprisingly, Muhammad talks about those same things. It's mentioned in the Quran and the Hadith. We don't believe the Quran is the words of Muhammad, but I'm just saying now that that's interesting. What's going on over here? Am I missing? This is how many? Let's see, two, three, seven. Okay, I think there's seven of them. Yeah. So, 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 what's inter what's going on over here? It, 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 I think it's pretty obvious for everybody here that obviously Muhammad thinks he can do a better job in answering these questions than the very New Testament is doing. So does he? Let's find out. If 
So let's do a let's 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 play this little game over here. We're gonna use science to see who gives the best answer, choose the best answer, and let's see who does it. Let's see. In fact, let me uh, let me uh, check mark that. Let, let let's see who does a better job. Now, if Jesus scores, these are, I think there's seven of these. One, two, three, four, five. No, never mind. There's six because I'm missing one. Mustard seed, alcohol, washing hands, divorce, epilepsy, meat consumption. And there's one which I'm missing, which I don't know which one it is. Okay, but anyways, let's do six. If Jesus wins 6-0, then everybody should bow down and worship him as God. Seriously, he saw this coming, and Muhammad could not beat him. If Muhammad wins 6-0, then he should be accepted as a true prophet. And if athe if it's like an even spread, like three or four, then maybe atheism could be true, right? He gets some right, he gets some right, something like that. But if 7-0, then Ozean's atheism has been demolished. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. People don't have that ability in the in the in seventh century. So I'm gonna go through this very quickly because I know I don't have very much time here. Mustard seed. Jesus says in the Bible, supposedly, of course, we believe in Jesus as a great Messiah prophet, but unfortunately, the New Testament doesn't accurately represent him. Um, he said that the, that the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. It's the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Wrong. It's not the smallest seed. Muhammad says, also uses the mustard seed as an example, but guess what? He doesn't repeat that scientifically incorrect statement about it being the smallest seed. So that's very interesting. If Muhammad is supposed to be copying out of the Bible, he would have copied that scientific error. So round one goes to Prophet Muhammad. Very good. You didn't repeat the scientifically incorrect statement. Alcohol. <clears throat> Both these books talk about alcohol. Science Today says that Muslim women are 50 times less likely to give birth to a fetal alcohol child and, 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 and is credited the teachings of Islam. The Bible has no scientific uh, recognition on the, on their view of alcohol. Now, some say, okay, well, well, you know, alcohol is good for your heart, therefore, no. The evil of alcohol, the harm outweighs any good, whether it's good for your heart or whatever. So that's the scientific position on alcohol. And that's actually explicitly stated in the Quran. So check mark number two. Very good. Muhammad wins that round too. Washing hands. Some disciples, some people came to, to Jesus and said the disciples are not washing their hands before they eat. Jesus gets argumentative about it. He said, well, you, you shouldn't do it as a ritual, which is a contradiction because if God wants you to be healthy, does washing your hands repeatedly make you healthy? Yes. Therefore, God wants you to wash your hands so that you can be healthy. That He wants you to do it ritually. So that's a big contradiction. No, to to argue, of course, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, it's foolishness to argue against washing your hands right before you eat. Muhammad says you should wash your hands before you eat, <laughs> as a ritual. The very thing which supposedly, allegedly, got Jesus so pissed off, which we know is not true. The Bible only allows divorce in terms of. Uh, div uh, Adultery and adultery and death. So if you, let's say, you just don't get along with your wife and you get divorced and you get remarried, you're a whore. Not my words, <laughs> but the words of born again, spiritual Christians. And they put that actually, not all Christians practice that because they can see how absurd it is. But a lot of Christians do. A lot of Christians who debate here on, on modern day debate do that as well. They believe in that. That's it. One time. Muhammad allows divorce irregardless and i'm living proof of that my ex-wife threw me out 14 years ago unceremoniously so i am living proof of that miracle right there muhammad gives a better answer than, than you have about two minutes vital. left nadir epilepsy a person came with symptoms of epilepsy uh to jesus and jesus says you're demon possessed and by doing that unfortunately how, how are you so he he, he 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 gnashed his teeth grit his teeth uh, and started foaming at the mouth. These are all the symptoms of epilepsy, which is actually mentioned in the Bible. And so how are you able to tell the difference between the two? You can't. And scientific research, which I've already presented to Ozian, pointed out that because of the New Testament's confusion between what a demon-possessed person and what a, uh, what a person who's allegedly, you know, who's epileptic, you, you can't tell the difference from the New Testament. Now they've all been stigmatized. A person who had this uh, seizures came to Prophet Muhammad, 
and he said, I will pray for you. Which, But what's important here, he didn't accuse him of being demon-possessed, thus stigmatizing all uh, epileptic people as being demon-possessed. And the scientific research paper, Ozin has already looked at that. It's not my words. What I'm saying, they're being stigmatized. That's, actually, that's an actual fact. So let me go in and, 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 and check mark that. Muhammad gives a better answer. Then finally, on meat consumption, Christianity allows you to eat all kinds of meat. All restrictions are lifted. Muhammad says, do not. But that's a mistake because CDC has issued a warning, do not eat bats and monkeys because these are carry diseases like Ebola and AIDS. Muhammad reinstitutes the restrictions and says, do not, do not eat animals with fangs. So there you go. That is exactly what CDC was, was, was recommending. Ozian has a research on that. I presented that to him as well. So here we have a perfect score. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's a, one which is missing, but I don't know where it is. <laughs> six, zero. Muhammad gave scientifically superior answers and did the better job on answering all of these. And that's the miracle of Islam. One or two, okay, you got lucky. There's no miracle there. But to score six out of zero, that blows away atheism. And that sure does blow away, uh, 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 what's it called, uh, Christianity. So, you know, that is what Ozian has to be there. He needs to explain how did Muhammad correct so many or provide better explanations on all That's of time, these Nadir. issues. And my time's up. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. And that was Nadir's opening statement. Thank you so much. Ozian, I've got 10 minutes here for you as well. Uh, the floor is all yours, bud. Hey, um, he needs to stop sharing screen. No, it's fine. Oh, yeah, he needs to, because you want to share, right? Yeah. All right, go ahead. All right. Is the Quran scientific? No, but I prefer to explore questions like this with a more nuanced approach. With a deep appreciation for both religious beliefs and scientific discovery, I offer my perspective not as a challenge to faith, but as an opportunity to dive deeper into the distinct roles that religion and science play in our lives. Let us go beyond conventional thinking, break down these barriers, and uncover the truth together. I may be an atheist, but I have many Muslims with whom I respect as friends in our exploration of truth. Thank you, Justin, the Modern Day Debate, for hosting this discussion, and thank you, Nadir, for exploring this topic with me tonight. I'll go through your scorecard during the open discussion. As Muhammad, peace be upon him, called for wisdom in Surah al Majudea 51811, I'll box these pronunciations, sorry. God will raise those who have believed among you and those who were given knowledge by degrees, and God is acquainted with what you do. And in Surah al Baqarah 269, which highlights the value of wisdom granted by Allah, he gives wisdom to who he wills. And whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given much good, and none will remember except those of understanding. Now I appeal to the wisdom of the Muslims that are watching this video tonight to consider this argument. The Quran is a beacon of spiritual guidance, revered as a word of Allah in Islam and serves as a guide for ethical living. Its poetic verses and profound teachings have inspired countless individuals and shaped civilizations making a spiritual significance essential in our discussion. Science is a methodological met exploration of the natural world through observation and experimentation. It thrives on questioning, testing, and revising based on observable facts to explain the how and why of the universe. Scientific findings and historical religious texts like the Quran may appear similar. For example, both promote hand washing for various reasons, However, it's important to consider these intersections in the respective context. The Quran's teachings encompass various rituals, including hand washing, which you have to really find out from the Hadiths how to do it properly, which are linked to spiritual purification. On the other hand, the scientific endorsement of hand washing for hygiene was formed based on germ theory and empirical research, which emerged at a later time. Science aims to gain insights through testable and falsifiable methods, in contrast, the teachings of the Quran are rooted in faith and divine revelation, making them beyond the scope of empirical testing or validation by scientific means. The Quran's teachings were shaped by the societal norms and beliefs 
of 7th century Arabia offering guidance that aligned with the cultural and moral landscape of its time. In contrast, science is not bound by a scientific, historical, or cultural context. Its principles are universally applicable, not limited by time or location, and driven by the current understanding of, of our natural world. Epistemic luck means believing something true without knowing why it's true. Like the Quran's early advice on washing hand matches what we know about germs today, but it wasn't based on germ science. It's like guessing the right answer without understanding why it's right. Seeing the Quran is scientific because of this epistemic luck, it, get, it got things right, but not through scientific methods. However, this doesn't lessen the Quran's importance in guiding people on how to live morally. Epistemic pragmatism is a practical approach to knowledge, empathizing theories that yield tangible, beneficial results. Take, for example, the scientific methods application to developing vaccines. Through empirical testing and evidence, science produces a practical solution to prevent diseases. In contrast, religious texts offer spiritual and moral guidance, which, while immensely valuable, doesn't follow the same pragmatic test and prove approach of science. It's like comparing a roadmap such as science, that guides you to a specific location with a philosophical book, religion, that enriches your understanding of life's journey without providing their physical route. It is important to distinguish between religion and science. The Quran serves as a spiritual guide, offering existential and ethical wisdom, while science helps us understand the natural world through empirical insights. Blurring the lines between the Quran and the scientific documents can result in problematic understandings. It may create unrealistic hopes for the Quran to offer scientific explanations, which is not its purpose. This can also devalue the importance of scientific methods that rely on observable evidence and testing. This blurring of lines can confuse followers as their scientific knowledge changes and could erode the spiritual foundation the Quran provides and see the eventual decline of Islam throughout the world. I may value that. <laughs> Encouraging Muslims to see the Quran as a spiritual and ethical guide rather than a scientific manual allows for a deeper understanding of its true purpose. This perspective helps us to appreciate the Quran as its intended context as a source of moral guidance, ethical direction, and spiritual wisdom. Although the Quran is a powerful spiritual guide, it should not be treated as a scientific textbook. This sacred text offers valuable lessons on faith and morality, but its teachings are centered around divine inspiration rather than empirical research. By recognizing this distinction, we can fully appreciate the essence of the Quran and also support the ongoing pursuit of knowledge through science, which relies on observation, experimentation, and evidence. Like the sacred texts of Christianity and Judaism, these spiritual guides should not be taken as sources of scientific knowledge. The ancient beliefs of biblical cosmology, worldwide floods, and a young earth may have significance in the respect of religions, but they do not align with current scientific understanding. It is important to recognize the differences between faith and fact when it comes to interpreting these texts. The path ahead for both believers and non-believers requires constructing a bridge between faith and science, acknowledging that each has its own valuable insights to offer in our quest for knowledge. Faith provides guidance for living a moral and purposeful life, while science sheds light on the workings of the physical world. By respecting the unique strengths and limitations of both, we can enhance our collective human experience. Education is crucial in promoting this understanding. By educating our communities about the principles of scientific research and spiritual and ethical teachings of various belief systems, we can cultivate a more sophisticated comprehension of both. Additionally, engaging in open dialogue between religious leaders, philosophers, scientists, me and Nadir can enhance this understanding by emphasizing the significance of each field and addressing any misunderstandings that may exist. When it comes to navigating sensitive discussions in diverse religious and philosophical settings, respect and understanding are essential. It is important to recognize and acknowledge the deeply held beliefs of individuals from different backgrounds, whether they identify as Muslim, Christian, or atheist and approach these conversations with empathy and openness. This creates a positive and constructive atmosphere for dialogue to take place. It is crucial to acknowledge that human understanding has evolved over time. The Quran was revealed during a time when the scientific methods we use today did not exist. Its teachings were primarily focused on spiritual and ethical matters. 
with the advancement of science, our knowledge about the natural world has expanded. And this does not diminish the spiritual significance of the Quran, but rather emphasizes its unique role in guiding believers. And this scientific movement that is perfectly miracles as a 20th century movement too. The diverse, okay, our world is enriched by its diversity, encompassing a wide range of beliefs, ideas, and viewpoints. When we acknowledge that the Quran and science can coexist harmoniously in, in their respective spheres, it expands our perspective. This allows believers to fully embrace their faith while also respecting the realm of scientific exploration and its impact on our comprehension of the cosmos. The phrase scientific miracle may seem contradictory because it is, it's two opposing ideas, science, which relies on observable evidence and logical reasoning to understand the natural world and miracle, which suggests an event that transcends those explanations. Science uses controlled experiments to explain phenomena, while miracles are often seen as unexplainable and extraordinary occurrences. As a result, labeling something as scientific miracle creates a contradiction as science seeks to understand things in a way that does not allow for the unexplainable nature of miracles. To sum it up, the Quran gives us priceless advice on how to live a good life and to be a better people. While science helps us figure out how the world works, the Quran isn't meant to be a science book, and that's okay. Its real power is in its spiritual and moral lessons. Let's appreciate both science and religion for what they offer. They both add something special to our lives, our communities, and our quest to understand life and find meaning. Even though I am an atheist and don't follow Islam or believe in the Quran, I really respect my friends who are Muslim, Christian, Jewish, and Hindu, and of any faith. What matters to me is if they aim to live a good life, try to lessen the pain of others feel, and work to make a world we all can love for a long time. And I conclude my argument. All right. Thank you, Ozian. Uh, before we get into the open discussion, I just want to remind everybody that this is Modern Day Debate. It's an open platform. We like to give everybody the opportunity to speak their mind, share ideas, and, well, have discussions. Um, don't be shy of that like button over there. I could, I could really go for some likes right now. And if you're not subscribed, now's a good opportunity for you to do so. Um, there's more debates coming up in 2024 for sure, and you're going to want to be subscribed so you don't miss any of those. Uh, right now I'm going to reset my clock. Oh, by the way, after the debate, don't forget a couple things. One, there's an after show on a channel called Matters Now. Also, I'm going to hang out after the debate a little bit. Um, so if you guys have any questions about me and who I am, we'll spend a few minutes and um, I'd like you guys to get to know me and maybe I'll get to know you. Who knows? Anyways, we've got 50 minutes uh, cut out here for some open discussion time. Um, as I told you guys backstage, my job will basically be to just sit here unless you guys start to get a little mean or talk over each other. Uh, with that, the floor is yours, gentlemen. You're muted, uh, the deer. Yeah, I do want to talk about the mustard seed first, unless you got something specific well, to say about my opening. Yeah, I, I have something specific to say. How, how do you explain us wearing the same outfit today? Is that some kind of coincidence? Oh, it's the same color. Okay, so actually, I don't, I don't have a Superman thing, but close enough. I was going to ask you to take it off, actually. So you want me to take it off? Like, no, I mean, I no, no, I mean, no. But that's okay. You got a Superman emblem on it, so we don't have the same. It's a, it's a different T-shirt. It's the same color. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, let, let, can let's we go. stay on topic, please, gentlemen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So my yeah. So to the mustard seed. Um, okay. Sure. So well, well, I think it's clear that Muhammad clearly gave the better explanation i mean the better answer here on mustard seed by avoiding the explicit scientifically wrong statement as we find in the new testament do you have any problems with that yeah it, well first of all it wasn't a scientific claim in the new testament it was just a claim it's a parable a parable about things um coming from small beginnings into large things so it's like the idea that i'll plant the seed of this idea of christianity and christianity will grow up into this worldwide religion. So that's sort of the parable. And if you're talking to people within the community, you're going to use concepts that they understand. So the people that he was speaking to would understand what a mustard seed was mm -hmm. and how to mm -hmm. mustard seed crew. So um, he could just as a small seed, but often when we talk in parable, uh, we just talk about what the people know. Like he's speaking metaphorically, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And 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 we have I mean, it's, we have evidence of that too. Like, sure. Okay, well, let me here look, I got the verse right in front of you. I'm sharing my desktop. Let's see I what do it too, says. But yeah, go ahead. And, and let's see if this is all just metaphorical. <laughs> so anyway, the, the, see, this is the cop out which all these religious people, Jews, Christians, Hindus do when you show them si explicit scientific contradiction in their book. They say, it's a it's a metaphor. It's allegorical. It's a metaphor, you idiot. So <laughs> they will force this interpretation to make the problem go away. But Let's read and very quickly what it says inside Matthew chapter four verse thirty. Including it's, Muslims do that all the time too. When that's they talk about the property. miracle, Ozian. This is the miracle you are going to see in not just in this debate, but in all the debates which I've done. We never have to play that silly interpretation game. Rather, it's a role reversal. It's the atheist tonight who's playing that silly interpretation game. But part of this scientific miracle is that whatever claim you have, okay, well, this contradicts science or this is not right, it will be responded with facts and references to back that up so you are definitely no it's not even about scientific like claims there's lots of claims within the mm -hmm. well it's uh, like an example like uh the prediction that supposedly muhammad made about the roman persian war a war that gone back and forth over the time for a long time so it's like calling the a football game hey you actually got it right but just the fact that you got it right who was going to win at the end mm -hmm. doesn't mean you predicted any future events so okay, it's sort well, of a post hoc rationalization the of the claims so it's a parable yeah. so let's talk about the mustard seed oh yeah okay so i've got the verse right in front of me what mm -hmm. the bible explicitly says is that the mustard seed is in, Ma in mark chapter 4 verse 30 and 30 to uh, 30, 32 it says the smallest seed you plant in the ground that's false it says that it's the smallest yep. of all seeds. This is false. That's actually that's in Matthew chapter thirteen, verse thirty-one to thirty-two. So the fact, so that's why I okay. scored Muhammad as giving doing the better, uh, you you know the the better answer here because you see you can play the metaphorical allegorical interpretation game, but but that's just it. You're just taking an explicit okay. passage and you're spinning it to make it the problem go away. So well, you believe here, it makes more sense not to mention these wrong statements and that's what we find in islam so i don't think you're able to argue that islam did give a better example of the mustard seed because it doesn't have the problematic you, stuff in it are you seeing the quran doesn't talk about in metaphor let's take the six days do, do you believe in the six day creation yes i do believe in that six but literal days six literal days no, not six oh, then it's days. false then okay. it's false it's a scientific well, falsehood because let's, you're you're taking uh, it as a Ozean? parable. Well, I get to speak too. I just let you speak about this. But can we parable. talk about the mustard seed? I am going back to the mustard okay. seed. So you can look at the six day creation. Mm -hmm. That wasn't a literal sure. six days, right? Anybody, I think, who's. But there are Christian fundamentalists who will argue it's a literal six days. They believe science is false. So, like arguing within their own worldview would sort of be fallacious. So, that is the same thing here. So, you could say, okay, so this didn't literally mean. The smallest seed it was it's a parable describing small things reaching like large things right like um your your small faith in god will blossom into this magical thing that can move mountains but did he actually literally mean you could move mountains right okay so going back to the thing about the days uh you know we can talk about uh, whether if islam contradicts science and i will answer you on that i'll show it's actually perfectly acceptable to say the earth was created in six days but the problem here is you you've got to now use this smooth interpretation smooth over game to try to reconcile the problem which is what you're doing but i don't think you're able to but really you're doing the same it. thing hold on a second not with mustard seed we can do the days oh, thing in just a second special here, okay? pleading let's let's finish one issue at a time here so with mustard seed i we don't have to do this interpretation game, which I don't buy. That's a problem. It's not just Nadir. Okay, this is not Nadir Ar Ahmed's argument. Many atheists will point out the same exact thing, that this is scientifically incorrect, and we just don't accept the interpretation spin put on it. And, and that's okay. So the problem... Not this what, atheist. What, what we know, what we can say as a fact, is what's explicitly written in the Bible is problematic. That's undeniable. But Islam 
does the, the the mustard seed example in Islam doesn't have that problem. So that weekend, I don't see you're able. Uh, that's why I gave Muhammad the check mark. Alcohol. Let's move well, on to the well, next one. No, yeah. no. First of all, yeah. like you're you're just automatically assigning the win towards the mustard seed, but you haven't like. Okay, does the Quran? Do you ever think anything is um, a parable within the Quran? Yes, there's parables. Look, it's okay. you know how do you? Okay, yeah. let me. Okay, that's good. Do you know how do you determine the difference between what is meant to be literal and what's meant to be a parable? When it's something which is obviously true, I mean, which which is kind of obvious. Being like, for example, uh, in the Quran, it says, "Lower thy wing." to your parents. Well, we know we don't have wings. Look, there's a scientific errors. Do I got wings? No, but here we can see everybody knows human beings don't have wings. And when the Quran actually said that, it's speaking in a metaphorical way. So that's something I can give to you. I can give to everybody and we can appreciate, acknowledge and say, yeah, that's a metaphor. So, so that's how I'm able to understand it. So how is this a scientific error specifically? Because science allows for errors. We, so, okay, so within the domain of science, scientific inquiry, when we do observations, we do testing. At one time in science, it might have been okay to say the mustard seed was a small seed because that's what we observed. That's what we were able to measure. So we knew within that region that the okay. mustard seed was the smallest seed. So for that to be a scientific claim was okay. That's not a scientific error. The good thing about science is that science can reevaluate its claims. So if you want to say that the it's a science and science should evolve and develop as our understanding changes, which neither of these books are doing. Neither of these books are giving the explanation for why we knew the mustard seed was the smallest seed or whatever, why it was six days, why this is considered to be parable and not be able not be taken literally. It doesn't explain that. OK, so you're not getting it. You, you see, the problem I do here, get it. what? No, what is explicitly I, written? Don't tell me what I don't get. I okay, do okay, get it. Let me, you've had your chance to speak. Let me, right. let me talk. What is explicit? We just, well, see, let me explain to you where the scientific miracle is. You see, we have to, all the wacky, quacky interpretations, that put them aside and just look at what we know to be factually true. I will admit, once you plaster on all this wacky, quacky interpretation, then there is no miracle. The miracle of the Quran is when you just look at the facts. What we know to be a fact is what is explicitly word for word written in the book is incorrect. No, the mustard seed is not the smallest seed. Then you got to plaster on all this interpretation, allegorical, metaphorical uh, stuff to make the problem go away. Now, if that satisfies you. That's okay, Ozian. But I'm only I only look at what is factually uh, what is factually true. You can have your interpretation. So the issue here is a lot of people are not going to buy into that interpretation. What we know for a fact is mustard seed is problematic. It's problematic in the Bible. You need interpretation to make the problem go away. How's that problematic? You know so what, okay. You said it causes suffering too in your opening. Yeah. Now let's how, get to alcohol. How let's did, wait, to, wait, how does believing the mustard seeds, the smallest seed not, cause okay, suffering? Okay. Not, it was alcohol, but we, I'm not with mustard seed, but with my next example, which is alcohol. But you do so, in your opening, yeah. you cover about how all these things cause suffering. Not so every, the mustard seed yeah. isn't one of those. That's yeah. Thank God. That one at least is okay. Now we're getting into problems. Okay. So there's no, so, yeah. yeah. Now, so when we look so at it's zero zero right now, so far neither's uh, proven that their claim. That's is because a you're not looking claim. at the facts because it's, they're not scientific claims, so it can't be a scientific miracle. No, you, no, you are not looking miracle. at facts. You are looking no, at wacky. You're talking wacky about interpretations. observations. You're talking about observations on okay. science and science. Look, what is explicitly the observations the wrong. wrong? The what observations is, wrong. Right, gentlemen. Okay. All right, there's a lot of okay. over talking yeah. a little bit here. There is. Um, Oz, I believe. You've made your point. Uh, so, Nadir, please carry on with your next point. Yes. So what is written, look, where the scientific miracle is, Islam is, is by looking at the facts, what we know to be factually true and all the interpretations you put aside. When you're able to do that, that's where the miracle is. So now with alcohol, it's, uh, as you know, and you read the study, I believe, uh, because Islam, alcohol is a dangerous drug, basically. And uh, Islam gave the right dosage on alcohol, which is none. And as a scientific study showed, Muslim women are 50 times less likely than the global average to give birth to a child with brain damage uh, called fetal alcohol syndrome. And the same study said to to really study this disease, you got to go to the Christians. That's where you're going to find this. So what my point here is, 
that once again, we see a, a much better answer on alcohol than the Bible. So that's why I gave it the check mark over here. Wait, are you seeing that if somebody, if a doctor says you, somebody needs to consume alcohol for medical reasons, they ought not do it? For medical reasons. Yeah, yeah, sure. If you if you are needed for medical reasons, then that's perfectly fine. Okay. And even in the Quran, it's okay to use it for medical reasons. That's fine. But what so, we we've got to go back to the study. In what I'm going to challenge you. In what? Well, way no. So the correct you dosage argue is the Bible's zero. answer is better than what Islam is saying. What? What? In what way? So the correct dosage isn't zero. Just to be clear, right? Correct dosage is zero. Let me get you that study. No, but you please. just said it was okay if it was for medical reasons. So it. it in some cases, they, in some cases, like for example, in mouthwash, they have some alcohol in it, but at the same time, they have non-alcoholic uh, wash yeah. as well, like NyQuil. You've got alcoholic and non-alcoholic. It's, so it's, it's just a hypothetical. If there was a hypothetical okay. reason you needed alcohol to survive, can I, can I, then, can I share then, my then you would change your opinion, right? That it was okay to drink alcohol? Can I, can I share my desktop real quick here? Uh, can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. I understand this, fetal syndrome, like alcohol okay. fetal this syndrome. This is what this is what science is saying. Look, let's let's read very carefully from the CNN article. It, um, you're not no, sharing anything at the moment, there. Nidia. Oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Let me share real quick. Um, yeah, no amount of alcohol is good for you overall health. Over your overall health, global study says. Well, this is CNN. And, yeah, article. many studies have shown that the overall health risk of drinking alcohol outweighs any benefits. Now, look what the Quran says. So there are word benefits. For word agreement. They have some benefit for people, but their harm is far greater than their benefit. This is word for word agreement with the re with, uh, with what the research is telling us. So there's so, benefits. There are some benefits in. But the, what, are you not reading? It says many. The overall yeah, they both risks say there's benefits. outweighs both... any benefits. This is exactly what the Quran says, right? It's word for word agreement. So th when uh, when the Quran said not to drink any alcohol, that's scientifically acceptable. When you go to your doctors and, and they'll ask you, do you drink alcohol? And you check mark, no. He'll say, good man. He's not going to say, hey, what, you don't drink beer? No, you I don't drink have a alcohol. Beer. Okay, but, that's not science. <laughs> but they, bo they both okay. say there's benefits for alcohol. Both okay. You're just saying that the detriments so, outweigh the benefits. So there are benefits and okay. there are detriments. In what way? But you is, scale the two, one's worse than the other, is all you're saying. So you're what, better I'm off not drinking any alcohol. Says. Well, they both I'm say sure, the same thing. Okay. They Nadir, both are saying the, the same thing. For a bit there. Let's okay. let Oz, they're, uh, they're both saying there are benefits, but they're both saying there's the detriments outweigh the benefits. So in the in the grand scheme of things, right. you shouldn't drink alcohol. But you did admit that there might be cases where there are benefits where people ought to drink alcohol if there are medical benefits to doing so. Now, overall, most people should probably avoid alcohol. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, but that that also within the Quran is not a scientific claim because it doesn't explain why it causes fetal syndrome. It doesn't explain why it causes all these mm -hmm. other issues. And we knew within cultures around the area, there's been bans on alcohol from culture to culture through different area. It's no unique thing just to Islam in general that we would ban alcohol. Okay. So I Ozzy, and you're not even in this discussion. Okay. I'm gonna tell I'm you absolutely what, in the discussion. Okay, here's I'm here. Uh, here's what you're missing. Here's what you're missing. The issue here, I'm going to go right back to my chart. Who's giving the better answer? You are not even arguing the, uh, against my argument that if you, this is about one book correcting the other, giving a better answer. You're not even arguing the case. No, look, Jesus gave a very good answer over here too. Therefore, Islam answer sucks actually. So the check mark goes to Jesus here. You're, you're not arguing anything about the check marks. You're just saying, well, I would like this to see this. I'd like to see that. The issue here tonight, I'm putting the check mark for alcohol. It's clear Islam gave the, the scientifically superior answer. So now this right now destroys all of Christianity because, because now the question which you have to raise and the Christians have to answer, I mean, is, okay, if Jesus is God, then how do you explain that an alleged false prophet came and saved millions of children from fetal alcohol syndrome, brain damage, while the true Lord and Savior let them perish so the check mark goes to alcohol let's go to washing hands uh <laughs> now i now once again Wait, another problem here you're not gonna let me close that like well, you are you gonna argue that the islamic answer is not as good as a christian answer if you're not gonna argue that i'm gonna argue 
that neither of them are a scientific answer. This is not a scientific claim. Okay. It's a ritualistic, social-like thing that they wanted to in, in, um, institute for Islam. It's not a scientific claim. So anytime you see it's some scientific claim, that's just not the case. Just mm -hmm. because there's a coincidence between what science says currently, and science could change because our knowledge could change in the future. Baakal. Yeah. So that's another wacky, quacky interpretation not of what wacky, you're trying quacky. to redefine what scientific means. When I say this is scientific scientific claim, I'm quoting the study right over here, which I'm sharing my screen if you can see it. This is what the scientists from the European Child and Adolescent Psychiatry 2009, 2019 study states. The Islamic faith promotes abstinence from alcohol, and it says as a result, they're 50 times lower than the global average. Is this scientifically significant? Yes, it made this research paper as well as others, by mind you. So when you say this is not scientific, then this is your quacky interpretation. No. This goes back to the Islamic argument that really has won every debate. If you put aside the, the interpretations and just look at what we know to be factually true, that's where the miracle is. So wacky, quacky interpretations about the mustard seed, wacky, quacky interpretations about what is scientific you know, this is where I see your problem here. Oh, then actually true. This facts. is not, this is not a factual true statement right here. This is a scientific claim. So when it comes to it's it's the case. So science doesn't prove anything, first of all, right? So I'm not being wacky daddy wacky doodle about science. Science mm -hmm. in the first place does not prove anything. It's used as inductive okay. reasoning to as the best explanation for what we know, which means what we know can change in the future using the scientific method, which is a system, systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. Okay. None of which is done in the Quran. So the, the what happens here, if it comes in the future, they find out scientifically that you should drink alcohol, you ought to drink alcohol, and that's the case. If they do that, people are convinced to become Muslim because of this type of claim. They're mm -hmm. going to lose their faith in Islam because... Science sure. is going to contradict this, but this should be a spiritual yeah. ritual thing, not a scientific claim. Tell that to the scientists. They're the ones who cited the Quran and Islam as being this contributing factor. So you need to now <laughs> educate. Those aren't your science. So that's yeah. not science you're appealing to either. You're appealing okay, to like I am showing. Let's look at the study again. The Islamic yeah. faith promotes absence of alcohol, and yeah. it goes on. This is what the scientists have credited the religion of Islam. Who's, with. This is it's just, this isn't a scientific claim. This is not a scientific paper. Okay, this is let's just look at this. That, it's the European Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Let's, let's okay. Let's let's open the yes. article here. Mm -hmm. It's an article. This is the article which I'm quoting from. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, the casual web of fetal alcohol spectrum uh, a disorder and review of casual uh, diagram. Okay, and it, it talks and it goes on. These are the scientists right here listed here. So what are you seeing? They're, they're not seeing Islam. They're seeing the lack of drinking alcohol. What creates better alcohol? And Islam's prohibition against alcohol okay. will mean there's less of those type of syndromes. Yes, correct? they're crediting the read carefully. They're crediting the religion of Islam. The yes. Islamic faith promotes abstinence from alcohol, and abstinence is, is high among Muslims. Correct. And then it tells that they are 50 times less likely to give birth to an FAS child. That's the first study. Let's look at another study: theory of minds in children with fetal alcohol spectrum disorders. Yeah. As well, a, I agree. A, yeah. Now, but it's not a scientific claim. It's it's okay. This this here is not a scientific claim about Islam. The scientific claim would be about what causes fecal fetal no, alcohol spectrum disorder, Islam. which is drinking. What they're okay. seeing is a any type of culture. So they're looking at a major culture that that prohibits the drinking alcohol. Any culture that prohibits the drinking alcohol. Will have this consequence, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just the fact that they culture. No, not, the... not necessarily. So yeah. Well, okay, how so, not? Okay, but that's irrelevant to my argument, uh, Ozian, about who's really doing the who gave the better answer. Look, you have in no way shown that uh, the New Testament answer has any merit whatsoever. So the check mark stays, and we need to move on because the issue here. The miracle, I mean, the questions you're asking, yeah, we could talk about that, but I don't see it real, real, how that's relevant 
to the argument which I'm presenting tonight that book B gives better answers than book A on these issues. And that is clearly a better answer. Now, washing hands. So it's not scientific. Okay, you know, washing okay, hands. You seem to have your own. The issue is not what well, you can have your own private definition of what scientific uh, is. But what, I not, quoted what it. I'm getting you to understand is we have better answers on these issues in Islam. And let's get to washing hands now. Washing hands, of course, as I mentioned, Jesus starts this just big argument about washing hands you before you eat your dinner, you know, you a, and and that's a contradiction because if God wants you to be healthy, yes, does washing your hands repeatedly make you healthy? Yes. Then God wants you to wash your hands repeatedly cuz by doing so will please God. That is what a ritual is. But Jesus says, "No, not if you're doing it ritually." So this is a big contradiction and Islam Muhammad comes uh, forward and he says, wash your hands before you eat, winning the recognition once again of the of the medical community as they have recognized Islam's contribution to science on washing. In fact, let me get that article for you. So I think it's undeniable here that once again on washing hands, Muhammad gives a better answer. Wash your hands, for God's sakes, before you eat. How many times? <laughs> oh, several times. How many, well, where does it say that in the Quran? How many times you should wash your hands? Okay, that we can get into. Let's let's oh, okay. let's take a look at this uh, right here. What the actual hadith said, said over here? Oh, the hadith, not the Quran. So it's, it's this well, is not Muhammad. Then this okay, is the well, hadiths. Whenever okay, what the what the text here? So what's interesting here is Muhammad is reinstituting washing hands as a ritual. It says over here, and it was narrated from Aisha that as the messenger of Allah wanted to sleep while he was in Janub, he would perform wudu. And he, if he wanted to eat, he would wash his hands, thus overruling the New Testament here on So this, no, so this isn't a chronic claim. This, this is a claim of the Hadith. Yes, and that, but we follow both. Now, what's interesting is the, science so the, also says you should. So it doesn't mean the Quran is scientific; it means a hadith is scientific. Well, why? Okay, you're telling me I shouldn't be using hadith. No, I'm not telling you that. Okay, this well, is if is the Quran scientific? So you're claiming the Quran. Well, we should follow hadith too, right? Okay, um, I don't care what you follow. Okay. Um, that's your own religious faith, okay. and it shouldn't be guided by. Um, well, it should conform to the scientific claim as a post hoc rationalization, if you want to which is what I think you're doing with all these claims. But mm -hmm. you shouldn't... Um, yeah, anyways, I'll let you okay. continue. Okay, so science... Also I understand, says you wash should... your hands, it's good. It's um, G And clip there. your nails. Now, science also says clip your nails. Now, do we have a hadith which says to clip your... wash your hands and clip your nails? The answer is yes. Uh, he said to... In the following hadith, Allah's messenger said to basically to clip the nails... So we shave your pubic hairs and clean and clean the pubic hairs. Okay, of, of and, course. And cut your mustaches. What's what's the health yeah. benefits? But the of point all that? here is the, the, the part underlined here is to clip your nails. Nothing about the health benefits, though. What's the health well, benefits of clipping again, pubic hair? Okay, that is irrelevant to the fact that Muhammad gave a better answer on washing hands. So the okay. now now so here, reification fallacy wins the recognition of the scientific community in the following research article: uh, guidelines on on uh, on hand hygiene and healthcare. Listen to what the research says. It says the Prophet Muhammad always urged Muslims to wash hands frequently, and especially after some clearly defined tasks. So it has received recognition. So I think going back to my point, once again, you know, uh, Muhammad gave a better answer on washing hands. Now it's comes, just hindsight bias. So we are going to have an open how he gave the better hands. answer. Ozian, you can you are free to uh, to 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 guess how that is. But the question is what you're, you're not getting here. It is a better answer than what Jesus gave. OK, clipping oh. pubic hairs. So it, it wasn't a scientific claim. It didn't explain why you should wash your hand. It was a ritual. And the, the Jesus was arguing with the Pharisees, the Jews previously, that they were ritually washing hands. And he was seeing, and then he was being scolded by them because Jesus in the parable was saying, "What I worry more about is how you behave, how you treat other people, yeah. not the ritual of washing your hand before you eat food." Right. So, I already showed out the contradiction in that. So uh, look, that's there, not there's a contradiction. No, this is the what? parable yet again. Yeah, about it's all how metaphorical. You should live your life. It's all metaphorical. All these scientific errors are. Look at all this wacky, quacky that's interpretations correct. being. The, 
being the spread up along the text to make the to make the errors go away. Look, there is the no Quran should be taken metaphorically. What the what look again? What the Bible actually states here is that when people said, "Dude, the, the disciples are not washing their hands before they eat." He got pissed off. He got mad. He said he went on this big tirade and they said washing your hands ritually or like as a ritual. You don't need to do that. This is an and what stupid. else did he listen, say? Why did he say listen. that? Why did he say that? Don't be okay, dishonest Ozean. about the claim. No, 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 no. It if is an act the of Bible, stupidity. If you could, no, 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 no. Okay. What's Ozean? more important? What's more important? Washing your hands or treating other people, not harming other people. What's more important, washing that's, your that's hands not what it says. or not harming other people? No, what no, does no. it say? You're not quoting it in context. No, what's the parable about? Okay, you seem to be misunderstanding the text. What Jesus did, he went on a rant about following God's law. Which you should want to follow God's law or you want to follow man's law? Which one you want to follow? That's what his rant was about. Listen, when washing your... What do you I, think? I, okay, listen. Uh, let me, what, let me, you do, see should my you follow here? God's law or man's law? What do you believe? Okay. What I believe, what's common sense, is that there is no good reason to start an argument over washing your hands before you eat. Look at my hand. If I take my hand and I wipe my yeah. butt over here and I'm going to make you a sandwich, what's your immediate knee-jerk reaction is going to be? Dude, just please wash your hands, dude. Come on. Well, sick. I'm living in 2024, right? a different world. Okay. And, and, and So there is no good reason not to 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 argue against something like that to start an argument about washing your hands argument. okay and and so so that anyways, wasn't the think... message that wasn't yeah. the message in the parable it is, it is, it is the message ridiculous... in the parable is the pharisees care okay. more about following man's law and the what god wants right which is well, to follow like the Ten contradiction and all the contradiction that i already pointed out to you and that whole reasoning is all contradictory because if god wants you to be healthy does washing your hands before you eat make you healthy? Yes. Where does it uh, say God then, wants you to be healthy? That is a teaching of the Bible. Your body is your temple. You should want your God wants you to be healthy. Okay, so that's where the contradiction is. But the, the, you're not. Arguing, so that's in addressing... the that's in the Old Testament that oh, God wants you to be healthy. You're, you're not really addressing the argument that the, the real crux of the matter is. If you look at the Islamic response, it's just a better answer. That's all I'm trying to get at over here. So let's look at divorce. You know, this is again another nightmare where it, where uh, another example where Islam alleviates the misery and suffering of people. I mean, if a 16 year old get, girl gets divorced, and let's say there's kids involved, why should those kids have to suffer? Why should those, uh, you know, uh, why should a 16 year old girl have to suffer for the rest of her life not remarrying? And I don't know if you've ever been to church, but every once in a while, you will see women and people there who have never been remarried because. They had a fight in their relationship and the relationship ended. And they'll say, yeah, no, the Bible only allows divorce on marriage and uh, I'm sorry, on, on death and adultery. Now, Catholics have their annulments, but that's another reinterpretation uh, plastering over the text to make the problem go away. So now Muhammad comes and allows divorce for pretty much any reason. <laughs> and I'm living any reason that. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So what reason? It doesn't have guidance at all in the Quran for when you can divorce. She should go not. to the court system. She should go through the court system, talk to people. Pretty much there is nobody, uh, no woman is not going to get a divorce if she doesn't want to. You cannot live in an unhappy relationship. That's for sure. Well, so divorce has been, there's an entire chapter, chapter 60, I think, of divorce in the Quran. So once again, Islam is alleviating the needless misery and suffering, which I have seen myself. And if you go to church, you'll find those people. There's no reason for people to live like this. Now, of course, Catholics, they've got their annulments, but that's just some uh, interpretation scam. So well, that's Christianity. They, they're they yeah. the largest Christian group in the world. Um, yeah. They have, a, a, they're probably, I don't know if they're the larger than Sunnis, probably more Sunnis than Catholics, but sure. probably well, pretty I, close. I, I'm just going by what the explicit text actually says. Now, epilepsy, you can't go by the explicit text. You got to go by the the theology. The theology is what matters, <laughs> not the not you the almost said fundamental. You got to go by the interpretations. Look, I have already yes, said theology is you, about the interpretation. Theology okay. is about the interpretation but, of Ozean, the text. Where the scientific miracle of Islam is is in the facts. Well, we can say for factually true. That's where the miracle is. Islam is a fact-based religion. There's, there's once no you fact. Put in a, 
there's no fact and matter about divorce. Like there's no fact and matter about yes. marriage either. That's, well, you can get a divorce. Women can get a divorce just because she doesn't like her husband. Well, that's, that's, that's a fact. But those that's are all fact. human. They're human constructs in the first place. They're nothing scientific. There's nothing. You're not getting it. I'm saying that's a better I answer than it. what we find in the New Testament. So there's not a scientific claim. You are not claim. even in this, Ozian. You're not, like totally in La La Land. Land. You're saying it's a scientific claim. So it's not a scientific claim to you then, right? You're just yeah, seeing divorce, it's divorce, you're just seeing divorce is preferable than no, no divorce, divorce falls under family science. This is a scientific claim. It's Once not again, family this is a, science. This, it's, yeah, it's not family, family science. Okay, what are you talking about? It's a social claim. Family science. Okay, so you think divorce has nothing to do with science, Ozian? Oh, are, am I seeing that that um having two parents raising a kid can't promote the outcome of the child, like okay. improve outcomes you're for not, children? Okay, I think. See, the problem is you're this problem is not is a, Ozian. This is you're, not a scientific claim. None of this is you are, science. You are you are inside some kind of la la land here. You're not no, understanding obviously not. Where I think you're in the la la land, science, dude. Because you're okay. not talking science here. The issue here tonight. Okay, look, can you see you're my screen over here? Yeah, you put a thing that says contradict science in your own text and then okay, you show so a TED look, talk. This is a TED talk. Okay, here's what she's yeah. saying. She's 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 talking about uh, nothing about science. Okay, hold on a second. Let me find my reference here. Uh, against ninety percent of all homeless runaway kids. Oh, okay. This is about what the science over here, which I'm pointing out, living in single family homes. This is about 70... income. This is okay. about income, not about single family homes. No, listen, this is. I, this I is know the facts. Seventy one. You're wrong. Okay, can you please, Ozian? Can you allow me to speak here? Yeah. Seventy one percent of high school dropouts account for ninety percent of all homeless and runaway kids, okay. and uh, let me let me get to my actual article here. Uh, science. Divorce falls under social science, right over here. Divorce okay. effects. So you wrote that, and then you posted a link that talks about the effects of divorce. Okay, look, look. So the divorce issue here. itself is not a social science. So we okay, have look, effects look. of divorce. I don't want to get. I don't want to but get it's not about the on... divorce. Well, can I speak? You've been speaking for a while. It's not about the effects of divorce. The problem with the single parent household is the amount of income that's going in the household. When you adjust for income, the, re the outcomes of the children are the same as if it's two parents or a single parent. We don't have the same problem as we do, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's related to income. It's, it has nothing to do with a single parent or two parent. Okay, look, if you're trying to promote single I family homes, I can pull homes, up those papers too if you want to see them. Okay, I'm I not know... promoting single family homes. Don't okay, forget. Okay, thank you. But the where's my mouth? Okay, we're way off. We're way off course here. I we're think I want to bring it the... back. I want to bring it back it here. To... Okay, Ozian, I want to bring it back to where we need to be. The issue tonight, by giving women, by giving women the right, and they can, they can go through the court system and get a divorce. And, and not just for adultery and death, which is what the New Testament stipulated. That's a better answer. <laughs> That's my point. So let's move on to the next one. I'm okay? against I'm against marriage in both cases. So I, okay. I appreciate but that. You allow... have, but this is not about what you think. This is about what science thinks. OK, science and... doesn't make a claim to science okay. says having having the proper income and the proper care for the children provide the best outcome. Having okay. a religious document or a. A state document that says you're in a bonded relation doesn't affect the outcome of the child. It's about income and having the parents there to raise the child. So if you Nobody, want to look at those studies, we can do that. It's yeah. nothing about marriage. Nobody is going to argue against the case that single family homes leads to more crime. I you know, am more poverty. Yes, you they do. Okay. You're wrong. Okay. Look, here is it's the... about income. It's about income. It's not about single okay. family homes. Okay, here, here, here's the article I'm yeah. showing from you. Uh, father, uh, father, absent homes, implicit yeah. okay, implications for criminal then. justice and mental health professionals. Here are all the problems with it, but it's irrelevant to the fact. To the you gotta talk to the woman. Why should she live in a relationship she doesn't like? Okay, that's just crazy what you're trying what you're trying to well, justify here. So I, I don't. Oh, I'm now you're seeing it. Science later. We can now you're seeing it later. Yeah, but what needs to so be. You, Emphasize you're actually here. saying it's bad for Muslims to get divorced now. You're saying no. we shouldn't. You're no. saying that Muslims allowing divorce you're, is bad because no, it produces no, Ozean, bad outcome am, for children. Is that what you're arguing? Are no, you really o arguing against yourself with all these no, papers? Ozean, what yes, I'm you arguing did. is what I'm arguing is is that sometimes relationships don't work out. I agree. The woman 
and the husband should be free to get divorced and remarried. That's what I'm arguing, other than adultery and death. Wait, and if you can agree with that, then we can move on to point number yeah. 11. So you, you're arguing that it's so, but your argument this entire time, you just spent showing about divorces and the out, the effects and outcome for children we, goes look, against your claims. You're actually argued your argument for Islam being better about divorce. Your actual argument presented says that Christianity is better in the New Testament. Okay. How, so if you how, actually, yeah, because if you me, actually believe, that? because you're yeah. claiming that divorce, divorce, single family homes produce worse outcome for children. You said no, in your argument, no, I'm not so, saying that. You just what, did all uh, that okay, stuff. You, you might have misunderstood about what, single you, family. So you see, you, you already have another wife. You're seeing you what? have another wife in the wings ready to go when you get a divorce. Okay, let me explain to you what my position is. Okay, and and I'm living proof of this. What I am telling you is, people should be allowed to get divorced and sure. remarried, and yeah. not be called a whore. That's I agree. my point. Good. We agree on that. All right. Let's move on. I, well, because agree, the New but... Testament, now the New Testament says no. The New Testament says only in the case of, of adultery and death. And as many Jehovah Witnesses will point out, if you get divorced and remarried for other reasons than that, then you are an adulterer. And I'm saying no. I'm not an adulterer. Right. And, sure. uh, and so we can we agree on this. This is a better. But what it's not Islam a... is saying is a better answer on divorce. Divorce and remarriage science... is fine. It's not a scientific claim because the science you showed goes against it. No, actually, science is perfectly fine with divorce and remarriage. Okay, well, you just you just showed the science okay. says the outcome for children were worse. The no, evidence it didn't you say just, that. Okay, let's. You just let's showed back. like a TED talk talking about the the crime rates of, of single parent homes. Yes, the, single the, family. No, nobody's promoting single. The Bible. This is what happens when homes. you get divorced. The Bible okay. doesn't promote single family uh, homes. What are you talking about? Okay. Where, yeah. This this right here. This TED talk. This is talking about. Um, where is it? The Bible. Represents, this is really is talking about single family homes and the importance of a father in the yeah. home. Okay, and that's okay. where the New Testament is saying. The New Testament is saying no. There's no importance of the father once you're once the divorce happens. Then that's it. You're going to live in the single family. There'll be no father figure. So what I'm showing where's here, it say that in the New Testament that the father can just abandon the child? Where's it say no, that? If there, if the relationship doesn't work out, for, and and you get separated, divorced for other than adultery and death, then you will live in a single family home. That's where's it say that in the New Testament? Sure, I can show that to you. Um, let me get to the Bible verse. And where's where, and you you automatically are going to get remarried and take custody of the kids when you get a divorce? Is the Bible verse really uh, necessary to the topic? Frankly, yeah, because so how this is relevant is I'm showing you how it, Islam offers better answers, and thus it's correcting. It's correcting the scientific problems where, of where the this, Bible. Where does it say that the father is not supposed to be part of the raising okay, the Matthew children there? Chapter, Matthew chapter 5. So she can't get remarried. Anyone so. who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Okay. Yeah. But I tell where you that it, if, but I, let me read the whole verse. That but I tell you that, if, but that anyone who divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, makes her a victim of adultery. That's why... Christians will literally call them whores. And I've seen this happen. I've seen um, it too. It's horrible. And yeah. Uh, just because someone got divorced and remarried, you're a whore. That, where, does it say, where does it say the father shouldn't be part of the child's life there? I don't see oh, that. Oh, no, no. Whether the father be part of the child's life, sure, I think that's okay. I'm not going to argue against that. But the issue about remarriage that's what you said, is, though. is condemned over here. Okay. So Islam, Islam is, the, the issue is about, you know, being allowed to be divorced and remarried. That's where you don't the have to get, is. you don't have to be remarried to be part of the kid's life. So the father and mother, but you do be, accept being remarried should be a right and a good choice for people. Right. But that's not the claim you made earlier. So the if issue you, here is you made a claim. You, you made the do, claim about single family homes that, there, okay. that there's poor outcomes for single or single parent homes. Right. And that somehow the Bible forbids the father being part of the child's life. It doesn't do that. It doesn't say that. No, no, that's, just, that's for sure. That's for sure. So you, but that so you, happens, you overstated though. the claim but see, about that, the New okay. Testament then, right? No, no, no. That that does happen, though. You see, it creates the conditions 
for this type of single family homes to happen. Because no. a lot of times the father may decide to, well, I'm not going to follow this. No. I'm going to go and find somebody else and moves out of the most, area. No, most of the single but, family look, homes, you're missing most of point. the single parent homes are people that were never married okay. in the first place and they decided to give birth to the child. Okay. It isn't Which... all about divorce after the fact. Most divorcees, okay. a lot of them, now there's cases where it's not the case, but usually, at least under the courts in the United States, both parents are financially responsible for raising that child mm -hmm. in the United States, but if they okay. don't know that the father is. The I'm issue, just going to jump in real quick, just to let you guys know that we have a little less than 10 minutes left. Uh, okay, also wonderful. to let our viewers know that they so, have uh, so some time still wants... to get Sorry, Oz. Um, I want to let our viewers know they still have time to get some super chats in if they wish and to hit that like and subscribe button. And then we'll uh, get into the Q&A in about nine minutes. Uh, OK, so ahead. let's move very quickly to epilepsy. My only I, point here hold is on, divorce. I believe I believe yeah. Oz was attempting to to speak at that moment. So let's let him start this one. Just last I just ate is um, atheism's 400. So atheism's winning on all four counts. They have the better answer for each one of these claims, because we actually believe in science. Yeah. But yeah, let's go to epilepsy. Yeah, let's yeah. talk so about I, the Egyptians. I a, yeah, but, I did I did make a, a little amendment here to my number six. I put divorce slash remarriage, if you can see my screen, because that's, mm -hmm. I think, maybe I, I just put out there divorce, but it should be divorce remarriage, because that's what I believe is the better answer. Yeah, so now my question to you, I presented to you two scientific studies, uh, you know, before this, of course, which clearly showed that the New Testament causes uh, epileptics to be stigmatized as demon-possessed. Do you have sure. any problems with that? Absolutely. You also have a problem with the prevalent belief within Islam that jin jinns are part of, that jinns possess people too. Okay, that's irrelevant to what Not we irrelevant. are talking about, okay? Right the here. here Okay, so why do you reject science? Let me. Why do you reject? I the don't reject studies? science. It's, the okay. science is correct. What's wrong is okay. Islam, jinn possession from an Islam perspective. That is irrelevant. <laughs> oh, but okay. so you believe that jinn possession could cause epi epileptic type of episodes? Do you or do you not? No, it doesn't. Listen, what I'm. Uh, why do Why do something uh, like thirty percent of Saudis believe okay. that jinn could cause? Jinn possession are the cause of epileptic episodes. Okay. Let me let me first comes from the Quran, right? Okay. In the Hadith. Oh, um, Ozdin, I, I felt like you might have contradicted yourself by accident here. I have presented to you two scientific studies which accuse and put the finger on the New Testament for causing epileptics oh, to be that 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 the New Testament is the reason behind the stigmatization of uh, of epileptics uh, because they listed the symptoms. And so you said, I reject, I don't know if you said I reject those studies, or if you said now I'm, you're saying I do accept the science. So I That's don't know. It's not the what... science. First okay. of all, they, they weren't scientific papers. They were explaining. They were scientific papers. They're from they two, were one was from a newer, newer scientist. You're, you're confusing okay. published articles with scientific journals. Okay. But this is papers. obvious. We don't need the. Uh, so it's don't... not science. And okay. once Let's again, get to so the, the, can you see the, my screen? So we can agree see... that. We agree that that the Quran and the New Testament get it wrong about epilepsy. I agree. No, we agree that you don't know the difference between what the Quran and Hadith teaches and what some ignorant people in Saudi Arabia are doing. The, if, if if Muhammad said that people who suffer from epilepsy are demon possessed, and that's it, it's over. That's a scientific contradiction. But Muhammad so, gave the right answer. He avoids uh, the scientific contradiction in that um, in, in that he when the when the when the child with a who had epilepsy or had some seizures came to him he didn't do what the new testament did which is accuse him of being demon possessed which caused all the problems which the scientists are talking about now he he said i will pray for you and doesn't accuse him of being demon possessed now as for these ignorant arabs which you have shown in saudi arabia Al bakara 2 275 yeah. go ahead they what, quote that those yeah, who eat Reba, Usri, will not yes. stand on the day of resurrection except like the standing of a person beaded by Shaitan leading him to insanity. So you believe jinn possession can cause insanity? That is irrelevant to the you issue that's of true? epilepsy. Yes, absolutely. Is this... jinn possession a disease? Well, what, 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 what hadith are you quoting? Which one are you showing? So we can read um, it together. This is Al Bakara two two seventy five. Can you share your desktop just because I I can't I can't see anything what you're what yeah. you got there. You can't share if you're yeah, sharing. Share. Oh, I'm sorry. 
the but the issue here is epilepsy you're taking us to somewhere else and so okay once again we see it's that related to epi us... it's related to okay, epilepsy. how is this how is this related let's let's see where you're this is us. the justification once using... again another and there's also this story of the woman you're talking about but... okay wait, wait, show me what are you quoting because i i have no idea al bakara yeah. to 275 and then we also have these claims yeah, Satan here. leading him to insanity. Okay, wonderful. I mean, I could give you an example of that. Like, for example, Satan leading you to take mar uh, smoke marijuana, right? Satan leading you to do opioids. Well, yeah, they, they uh, where's meant, the problem there? They meant actual insanity where Let's it, get back it makes you irrational. Okay, look what you're quoting there. That's perfectly yeah. fine from a scientific point of view. Yeah. Holy cow. Here's a, here's a journal paper talking about Islam, um, 20 year old Muslim woman coming. I think they it's something like an evil spirit. I would say that the elders, no matter where they are, okay, okay, this it's about epilepsy. No... It's about epilepsy. Here it is. Uh, don't quote me ignorant people, okay, and say this is what Islam teaches. Don't, that is don't, ridiculous. Don't quote you people that practice Islam and the they're cultures ignorant that practice people. Islam. <laughs> quote the scripture, Ozian. Don't run away from the scripture. This all goes back to the fundamental Islamic yeah. argument. What makes Islam, What? where is a scientific miracle? The scientific miracle is in the facts. When we put aside all the wacky, quacky interpretations and you just look at the facts, Ozian, that's where the scientific miracle is. Now, let me just very quickly summarize where this, where the, well, what you the problem is. You can avoid it if you want. You, that's okay, okay. You and I know that what the, because, you know, the New Testament listed a bunch, a bunch of symptoms, you know, gritting your teeth, uh, you know, uh, foaming at the mouth, shaking. And those are the symptoms of people who have seizures. So, but the Bible says, okay, well, those people are demon possessed. Well, the problem now comes as the scientists showed you, I showed you two articles on that. How are you able to tell the difference between the two? You can't now. So now epileptics are being confused for demon possessed people by Christians. So this is a huge problem. But when this man, when a, when a, but Muhammad corrects this by uh, the same person who comes with having seizures come to him. Muhammad said, I will pray for you, but he doesn't accuse him of being demon possessed. So what we see here, and this actually helps alleviate this uh, once again, the suffering and misery. And you're right to the point that you've got some ignorant Muslims who, 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 who um, a been, lot of them are educated. That's not true. If okay, you read the study, like they're, 25 percent of them are highly educated people yeah, it, believe it. that is yeah they are still ignorant and they're still foolish and uh that is because this is the influence of the of christianity and judaism upon muslims so this is what we call an israeli yacht where it's the judeo-christian influence upon them but it goes back to once again on epilepsy muhammad gave the scientifically better answer no it wasn't a scientific finally, answer okay well then finally when we get to meat consumption because we only have a few more minutes here no. uh jesus allows me to eat, to eat meat of whatever you know there's no removes all restrictions on meat consumption that's bad because monkeys and bats the cdc says you should not eat them because they are the carriers of zoonotic diseases like ebola and other diseases like that muhammad comes and reinstitutes the side the, the the restrictions on any animals with fangs. So that would exclude what the CDC was talking about with the bushmeat, which is specifically focused on monkeys and bats. So once again, Muhammad gives a better answer on meat consumption, and that's six zero prophet Muhammad. He wins every round. Now, to your point, Ozian, about well, the it, other unrelated issues. Sure. Well, we no, let's go to zoonotic yeah. zoon zoon yeah. diseases. So the Quran ignores the majority of zoonotic diseases. You're, you're cherry picking a specific type by pointing to fanged uh, beasts, right? With like bats and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. it specifically says that. But we, he ignores rabies, ignore, ignores all these other diseases, at least in the United States, which are a huge deal in the United States. So these can all be passed on. And I want to stop sharing that screen. Okay. And you're, you're also ignoring really quick the causes. So the causes for these zoonotic diseases are not just from eating it. It could be spread through um, touching. It could be spread through contact with the fetal matter. It yeah. could be tech, um, contacted through like mosquitoes. Mosquitoes bite the monkey, go bite the human. That could be where HIV comes from. That could be where these other diseases come from. You don't know if it's specifically from eating the meat. 
Now, they will say in these journals that it could be because eating bush meat, but they don't specifically say it is because they don't know absolutely what the vector for these um, like HIV and no. Ebola were originally. Yeah. So they, they know it could be through one of those five vectors, and one of them is eating meat. So you are, the, you are true. If you don't eat something with Ebola, you're probably not going to get Ebola. But if you do eat the meat and the meat is processed safely, you're not going to get Ebola either. All right, yeah, gentlemen. So let, me, let me very um, quickly answer that, if I may. Okay, so, I'll allow so, you to respond, and then we're going to get into some Q&A. Okay, thanks. What the what the CDC, Center for Disease Control, says, do not eat, do not handle bushmeat, focusing primarily on monkeys and bats. Let me just share my article over here. Now, as for all these other animals, see, one of the pro, one of your mistake, which you are making, Ozian, this was supposed to be a comparison between Muhammad's answer and the New Testament's answer. But what you did, you removed... Uh, Jesus out of the picture because his answer is not very good at all, and you put science. So now this is science versus Muhammad. Sure, we could talk about that, and we will, but that's outside of the challenge which I have presented to you. I'm saying, no, let's first talk about Muhammad and Jesus. Let's see who's, or the Jesus of the New Testament. Of course, we believe in Jesus. The Jesus of the New Testament. Let's look to see who's giving the better answer. So once again, I think it's undeniable that by not eating animals was with fangs, that knocks out a lot of the bush meat. And that is a much better answer than what we find in the Bible. Now, to your point, well, does it knock out all of the diseases, all of this stuff? So now we're making that comparison between Muhammad and, and science. Well, the answer here is Islam is not obligated to give you the, the, the cure for diabetes, the cure for uh, cancer. Uh, it, so therefore, whatever you find good, you should say, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this great blessing. And this is how Islam alleviates the misery and suffering caused by the teachings of the New Testament. So I have not heard at all, or I don't think anybody can argue that what we find okay, in the New Testament is on, better. Hang on a sec. Um, I believe you've responded to his question, and okay. I've, I feel like you're about to roll into a closing statement. Now, if you want a couple minutes for a closing statement, I'll also allow Ozian a chance to have a couple minutes to close as well. Let's, you, let's just do one minute closing uh, statement. Do you, do you agree with that, Oz? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, go ahead, Nadir. I'll give you 90 seconds. I'm feeling generous. Well, thank you so much. So um, I, I, the issue is clear. Islam gave a scientifically superior, much better answer than what we find in in the New Testament. The problem was Ozian. What his whole presentation tonight was to just reinterpret stuff, make it allegorical, metaphorical, to make the error go away so it looks like there's really no error being corrected. Everything's fine there. Uh -huh, there's no problem there. All religions pull the scam. The scientific miracle of Islam, one of the scientific miracles is we don't have to play a metaphorical, allegorical interpretation game to smooth over the error, which is explicitly in that text. Never did you hear tonight from Ozian that the New Testament gave a better answer. Never did you hear from him that, that you know, that actually that... Uh, the Islamic answer was contradicting science or anything like that. But that this is what the challenge was. He he was not, he was 90% in some la la land talking about extraneous issues. And a lot of it he just didn't understand the science behind it. I had to explain and handhold him through the science. No, here's how alcohol works. Here's how this works. Okay, how epilepsy works. You know, the scientific, I'll say this once, I'll, I'll say it again. The scientific miracle of Islam is by taking away all of the lala quacky interpretations and just look at what we know to be factually true. Not everybody can do that. All right, that's it's fine a God-given talent. Okay, go ahead, Ozian. Take ninety seconds, and we'll get into our Q and A. Okay, mustard seed hindsight bias is category area. It wasn't a scientific claim within the Bible, so you got that wrong in the beginning. Atheist one. Because the atheists are the one that figure it out, which one's a small seed. Uh, anyways, alcohol. He conceded that sometimes it's okay to consume alcohol if it's for medical reasons, so they both get it wrong. Washing hands, it's a ritual. You have to go to the deeds. It's not even in the Quran, so it wouldn't be a scientific miracle from the Quran, even if you consent, um, even if you adhere to some type of scientific miracle, which is an oxymoron in the first place. 
Um, divorce. Uh, his own evidence contradicts him when it comes to divorce. His own evidence that he presented, which I disagree with the evidence. Um, I think it has more to do with income than it does to do with a single family household. But in that case, it still contradicted his own claim. Um, epilepsy, epilepsy. The Egyptians got it wrong in 1700 BC. They knew it was a physical cause. It, it, it wasn't these religions that did it. And as he agreed that a lot of Muslims do actually believe that epilepsy is caused by jinn possession. When it comes to meat consumption, they still got it wrong in the Quran and the New Testament because it's not about the meat. It's about tainted meat. And nowhere in either decks does it talk about how these type of diseases get vectored. There's nothing wrong with eating pork. There's nothing wrong with eating bush meat as long as the meat is safe to consume and is processed. That's why we create livestock. Your better argument would be probably to be a vegan if you wanted to avoid these type of vectors through consumption of meat. And in that case, they both got it wrong because zoonotic diseases can be vectored through consuming of any meat, not just fang meat. And with that, I say atheism is 600, Muhammad, right. and the New Testament got it wrong. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of people in the chat real quick. I'm just going to do a little housekeeping here, interested in potentially some other debate topics. You guys have inspired the audience to perhaps get on stage and try their chances. So if you guys at all think you have a topic in mind, it would be interesting to see or that you could argue a particular topic just email modern day debate um i believe the email is in the description uh, it's also on the channel's description as well and if i can get a mod even to just link that email uh, i know james is very interested um, in new topics and new debaters so we're on the lookout for you guys if you're interested and yes you do need a camera um that's probably about the only rule we got um, all right, let's get into some Q and A. We got some super chats here um, for Ozian and Nadir. So, first super chat from Bitter Truth, two dollars. Nadir, why are you running away from me to debate? Oh my God, nobody's running away from the the issue. The people who are running away, uh, which is you know. It is actually the people who have the big YouTube channels. They are not going to want to, uh, you know, debate Quran and science because it's going to damage their careers. They don't have good answers like Ozian here tonight. You know, most of his ending presentation here was like the first time I like listening to these arguments. You know, we should have raised those things in this debate. I think it's undeniable. I mean, you are an absolute fool if you cannot see the fact that you omit saying wrong things like the mustard seed is the smallest seed you're giving a better answer and you're thinking, oh, I don't see any better answer there Then you are an ignorant person, okay? What the Bible says is explicitly wrong. Um, Muhammad, so, avoid dear, that. I'm sorry. That's a better answer. I'm, so, I'm going to respond yeah, to the insults, just, by the way. Yeah, um, Yeah. so first of all, uh, the question was they wanted to know, it, or rather they were accusing you of running away from them. Uh, no, no. It sounds it's, to I'm, me I'm like fine. Bitter Truth would like to debate you. Um, he's not, but the, James has already responded to him. You got to turn on your camera. Bitter Truth doesn't want to do that. Okay. He, um, and then when you said foolish, were you calling Ozian foolish or just someone in general who didn't believe no, the Quran? Someone in foolish? general. I mean, in general. No, he I mean, was talking specifically about me. You called okay. me out specifically when you said that. So now okay. you're just being deceitful. In okay. here. Oh, I never Ozean. insulted you during this, this entire debate. Ozean. I've been polite to you. I've been polite towards you? Islam. Was I not respectful okay. to Islam? This entire Ozean. debate. Did I ever say Islam was false? This entire debate, Nadir. Can you see? Can you not see the the foolishness of when you avoid an explicitly wrong statement, and that's a good job. That is something good, and you cannot see the value in that. That is foolish behavior, Ozian. So can since you, you don't want that? to answer my question, I'm not going to answer you. I'm just going to point okay. out the people that voted on the survey. There's 408 votes in the chat. Um, 91% said that the Quran is not scientific. 91%. So 91% of the audience watching right oh, now man. is foolish, according to you. And I presented these claims in my opening argument. If you were listening, I talked about how yeah. you were confusing pragmatic knowledge versus epistemic luck. You're trying to use luck. Luck is no pathway to truth. Okay, the Quran let's is talk not about a pathway that. through scientific truth. Okay. The debate's um, so, over. This is yeah, Q&A. The debate's over. Q&A. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't insult me. Yeah, let's just avoid uh, just calling anyone foolish if we can just do that. Okay. Ignorant. Then we... yeah, thank you. 
Um, right. Next was Yo Hooligan gifted twenty modern day debate memberships. That's me. That's to you. That was from my pocket for you guys because I wanted to. And if you don't like it, well, too bad. You're a member now. Enjoy. Um, right after that, we have bitter truth again for five dollars. Uh, Nadir, Ebola spreaded by bats to wild animals, including halal deer, halal wild beast monkeys. But the Quran says deer, cow, wild beasts are okay to eat. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is all off topic. It's not addressing the argument. Let's just go along with what you're saying. L look, did Islam knock out every single animal that could cause a zoonotic disease? No. But the question which I'm raising tonight, in spite of what you see as alleged flaws, and I'll address you on that, in spite of that, is it better than what you got from the New Testament? Yes, because the New Testament removes all restrictions on meat consumption. That's where the correction is. It's a better answer. Now, let me answer you scientifically. From if you, In fact, it's probably better. Can you guys see my screen? Um, if you look at what Islam is presenting, it knocks out a huge amount, a large amount of zoonotic diseases. So if you can look at my screen over here, this is how the disease is spread. Once you take monkeys... The deer... And out to of deer. The, hold on, can I please speak? Once you take monkeys and bats out of this equation, then the deer will be safe, as you can see over here, because that's what CDC is focusing on. Monkeys and bats. That is you can eat deer meat. We can eat deer meat here in America. That's perfectly fine. It's showing it's, that it, deer well, can get the disease on, right on. there. Ozean, okay. Ozean, 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 but exactly. this is oh, not on, relevant Nadir. to what I am presenting. Yes. Okay. I am perfectly fine, Ozian, if you want to respond to what Nadir is saying. Uh, let's try and let him finish. However, the question is specifically to Nadir, so I would like him to have the last word on the question. Um, Nadir, are, are you finished making your point? Can yeah, yeah. Let, let Ozian go to respond. Yeah. Go ahead, Ozian. I, that's his point. It shows the deer can get vectored, and that can transmit to humans right there in the picture, right there. Yes, but Ozian, you, you see, there's two things. You problem is you're not in this debate. The issue here, what I'm presenting, in spite, let's just well, agree with what you're saying, yeah. that there are some flaws in the answer. Okay, but is it better than what the New Testament is giving? Yes, it's a hundred times better. That's what my argument is. But now let me return back to what you're saying. The issue here is CDC is okay with you eating deer. We all eat deer meat here in America. The question here, once you take monkeys and bats out of this cycle, that's going to definitely, uh, you know, uh, uh, change the dynamics of, of, of how Ebola is spread. So to eat deer meat, CDC didn't say you can't eat it, but it's showing you the cycle of what happens. Uh, the focus, if you understand the science, which you don't, you it's the monkeys and bats. That's why if you look at this article, they're focusing on those animals. Okay. Thank you. Um, don't get comfortable there, Nadir, because guess who's back with another $5 bitter truth? says washing hands uh, washing hand won't wash out the virus nadir unless you are using soap even six days are human days in sahi al muslim hadith mm -hmm. what are you talking about uh, forgive uh, me if i mispronounced anything nadir. yeah so so the, the so the the question here is you know uh how many wacky quacky interpretations are are, are we finding here so i counted two uh, which all goes back to see that the issue here, when people raise these objections, and most of what Ozian even presented is all based on interpretation, personal interpretation. Uh, the first wacky, wacky interpretation is God is, of course, he does. This is when the earth and the universe was created. This was some miraculous event taking place. So that's outside of science. We don't really apply science to the miracles of God. So if God said he wanted to create the whole universe in one second, that's perfectly fine from a, sci from a, from a scientific pr uh, perspective. We don't care. But let us, uh, it is also a misrepresentation of the Quran because we could go, and it, uh, if you could look at my, uh, my screen over here, it says inside chapter 22, verse 47, chapter 32, verse 5, that Allah created a day equaling a thousand years. And inside some verses, it says 50,000 years. So it's arbitrary. That's why one day cannot be pinned to a 24-hour period. 
the hadith, which you're talking about, it doesn't pin it to a 24 hour period. You have misrepresented the Quran. You have misrepresented the hadith and you have misrepresented science. That's a triple here. Wacky, quacky interpretation spin that you've put on the Quran, the hadith and science. Do you have a response to that, Oz? Well, especially when he directed the claims towards me. Yes, it was. So 50,000 years, even if you grant that per day, that would be 300,000 years, which doesn't match the science. It would still be false. Um, so I understand that you can see a day uh, unto God is unto like a period of time to man and a day to man is like under a period of time to God, whatever. that that It's in the Old Testament too. And it talks about a thousand years because those people at the time, a thousand years, which is like a big, great, huge number. But if you just read it, literally and not as a parable then you can conclude that it's six days and a lot of people do believe it's six days so last word literal yeah so that as you can see he tried to uh he's still holding on to the wacky quacky interpretation uh in that we don't care because god this is the, the way the universe was created was by a miracle and so miracles of course god could create the universe in one second. That doesn't contradict science. Why? Because this is a miraculous event. So he was refuted right there. But you're not getting it. If God created a day equal to a thousand human years, then he created one for 50,000 years. Don't you think he could create more days, which is uh, equal to, oh, I don't know, a billion years? I don't. So the point here, all of this is just wacky, quacky interpretations, wacky, quacky analysis of our text. But you see, what I keep telling people, having that ability to decipher between facts versus interpretation, it's a God-given ability. Not everybody has it. And the people who, who object to Islam, right, they're not objecting here. based on fact. Okay. So I can't know the Quran is true because I can't interpret it. Okay, that's a good. So okay, I should never be. I should never be a Muslim because it's impossible for me to interpret the Quran. Okay, no, gotcha. No, it's because you are falsely interpreting it. That's the problem. Well, you said you I need to be God given. So see, God given has the given theory, me the ability to interpret the Quran. So I, I must not be able to be a Muslim because no, Ozi, God hasn't given me the ability to yeah, do that's it. That's true. According that's to true. your own argument, so that, I should not that, be a Muslim. Is, that's a good According fair to point. you. According Let me you. answer that. Let me answer that. There, that. That's a fair point where it comes to an issue of predestination. I believe I'm the theory which I follow. I'm not saying this is what Islam teaches, but the theory which I follow, those people who don't have that ability to decipher between interpretations and fact, it's a defect which they have in their brain. They were born that way. So there is, to, to a certain extent, a legitimacy that, okay, well, I was born with this defect. Yeah, sure. But I believe you can overcome that, if you will, by certain training. People can walk you and handhold you through this and teach you how to decipher between what is fact versus what some interpretation spin. So there is a little bit of predestination involved here. Now they want to say I have a mental defect. How, how, how are you going to convince me to want to be walked through it if I believe the claim is false? So maybe this is the first time you got to go back and look at this debate and see how much of I've what I Quran. was presented is based upon interpretation. How much of what I like, for example, when you spun the mustard seed text to make the error go away, metaphorical, allegorical, why did your brain do that? You see, my brain doesn't work that way. My brain looked exactly at what the text says explicitly, of course, within the context. And you got to ask yourself, well, why didn't a deer's brain work differently like that? Now, this is just a, my own personal belief. I believe people do have a defect in their brain which prevents them from seeing truth. Motivated reasoning. You're motivated to interpret it the way that conforms to your own worldview. That's what you do. Like in this, a lot in, of in people this, do. You know what? In every in this debate and in every debate, nobody has ever came and and raised the argument, Nadir, you're just putting your own interpretation on it. Nadir, you're just saying this is allegorical. That's your own interpretation. No one has ever done that. Now, I want you to listen and, and, and I want you to now tell me what interpretation did I give in this debate? Go ahead. You try to take a strict literal interpretation of the New Testament. Strict literal interpret. No, I'm not interpreting. I'm letting the text read for itself. Okay. Uh, well, that's what you. interpretation Ozi. means. Okay. Now you have caught. to interpret language. No. 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 You, you Ozi, have to interpret language. You're just wrong. Okay, Ozian. How did I misrepresent the text? What interpretation did I give in this entire debate? A strict literal is a type of interpretation. 
If okay, you read something example. strictly, a okay. mustard seed is the smallest seed. That would be a strict literal interpretation. That's just language, dude. I'm not making shit up. Okay. Okay. Versus well, a metaphorical interpretation. So there's two different types. Okay. You okay, take so, a metaphorical interpretation or a strict literal interpretation. Well, I think that's where the defect comes in. You see, the problem is, Ozzy, and you're I, all I'm doing is I'm picking up the Bible, letting the text read for itself, and I'm not putting my spin on it. I'm now maybe the issues of the King James Bible, maybe it's the NIV, but I am just letting the text read for itself explicitly. Now, that is not an interpretation spin. That is not any interpretation game if you just let the text read for itself. And that's where I think you have a have you you have a defect, you know, and you won't allow the text to do that. Who's up who who decides how to interpret the Quran? Me? I'm not interpreting the Quran. Can I interpret wait? Okay. Is it up to me to interpret the Quran? Can I interpret it the way I want to? Like strictly, literally, it says six days. I can do that. And but I can that, see that's false according to science. I'm asking this question leading you somewhere. No, scientists is perfectly fine with can, that because it's a miracle oh story. Oh, my gosh. So can you're I, misunderstanding that. Science doesn't deal with miracles. That's another false claim you make about no, science. Okay, science okay. doesn't deal in domain of miracles. You're lying about science when you say that, too. Okay. Miracles can, are not the domain of science. We have no evidence of any miracles ever happening, ever, for the first point. No good evidence of any mm -hmm. miracles ever happening, ever. Mm -hmm. Now... Who decides how we interpret the Quran? Me, as an atheist, I decide. Mm -hmm. Well, we read the look. Can we, I decide how to interpret the Quran? Yes or no? Well, if you do it proper, but listen, can I, let me no, let me properly. The then it's not my decision. Well, allow who me to decide? Can okay, you just you say me, yes or no? Ozean, are you going to allow you me? You know to where speak? it's leading to. Go okay. ahead. Okay. When okay let me look the issues which i have shown in the quran like for example the must the, the mustard seed being the smallest seed that text is not found in the quran so this is not an issue of interpretation okay there is no Listen. interpretation problem here when i told you that alcohol forbids the uh, um, alcohol is forbidden in the quran that is not a nadir interpretation that is what science and uh, academia state. So I am showing you academic papers stating what the Quran teaches. So there is no interpretation problem here. When the text of the Hadith says, do not eat animals with fangs, there's no interpretation problem here. There's just letting the text read for itself. So the whole issue of who should interpret the Quran and Islam it is a non sequitur. It is not an issue in tonight's debate. We're just letting the text read for itself, and we are accepting the apparent meaning, which is clear to you and clear to me. So why are we talking about what how Islam is to be interpreted? All right, I'm gonna no, because I'm gonna move on to the next question, Oz. I'm sure it'll come up again, uh, but I really want Nadir to have the final word since the question was addressed to him. However, this next question does not have uh, an official address. However, I can probably infer who they're talking to um taking back eden flat earth two dollars hi did the quran get flat earth correct carpet <laughs> so this is off topic once again it has nothing to do with what we have talked about here uh, and i would ask super chats so yeah, they have well, access I'd... to you as a debater and your position okay. is from the point of view of well, the quran they're i would i would have appreciated it if the super chatter would have listened to tonight's debate talk about the arguments which we have been debating for over an hour and a half now the Quran the Quran does not state anything about a that the or that the shape of the earth is flat this is yet another wacky quacky interpretation uh which they're imposing upon the text and in fact in, we can't even say that it's a wacky quacky interpretation it's just deception so let me share my desktop if I may. Uh, um, Nadir, it was. It, yeah. I don't believe that the question was asked with oh. in that way. They were asking you if the Quran got flat Earth correct. There I mean, is no flat Earth in the Quran. That is just nonsense. And there you go. Question answered. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't believe they were inferring or suggesting that it said it in the Quran. It looks like they were just straight up asking. Yeah. Okay. There is a minority of Muslims that do interpret it as being flat, but they are very small. However, this next question is for Nadir. Um, I'll give you one guess. From Bitter Truth, $5. <laughs> Nadir, the Quran didn't say alcohol is harmful in terms of its side effect. 
but due to the behavior of Sahabas, cutting camels, Sahi uh, Bukhari says so wrong. Again, forgive me if I really got those words wrong. I, I, I don't understand his argument. What, what is he saying? The Quran didn't say alcohol is harmful in terms of its side effects, but due to its behaviors of Sahabas, oh, okay. cutting camels. Okay. Well, what we find in Islam is word for word agreement with modern science. Modern science says that the, the harm of alcohol outweighs any benefits. Islam, the Quran says inside chapter 2, verse 19, word for word agreement with modern science. It says explicitly that, that the harm outweighs any benefits. Now, there is no interpretation uh, problem here, as uh, Ozian was, was, was mentioning at all. This is just what the text explicitly says. See that, but the argument, which I think everybody is kind of running away from here, is it's just a better answer than what um, the New Testament gave. Jesus turned water to wine. Since then, wine has been flowing like water in Christianity. The, because Islam's answer actually saved millions of children from brain damage. And, the, and, and has been recognized from the scientific community for doing such. But the Christian answer has no such has no such uh there is no benefit you can kind of say so the issue here is that once again islam is giving a much better answer scientists are perfectly fine with a person not drinking any alcohol unless for medical benefits but but of course there's always substitutes that as well so that's where the argument is that islam is a better answer which ozian really didn't argue against no, i argued neither were an answer but um you speak about me again um, interpretation, you can't read, if you read without interpretation, it means you read without comprehension. So you're either comprehending what you're reading and interpreting the words you're reading, or you have no comprehension. So it's just to deny that you interpret either strictly or in parables. There's many different ways of literary interpretation besides the one you're seeing is not a form of interpretation. Here, let me look it up. What types of Go ahead with the super chat. I'm sorry. So, so okay, look, o Ozian, the, the problem here is, okay, they, well, sure, scriptures can and should be interpreted. That's fine. But what you also have to understand and appreciate is interpretation is misused as well to cover up scientific errors, to cover up blatant scientific problems. Like, for example, now, Aaron Raw was a atheist apologist. He has also raised the same objections against the Bible uh, about the about the washing hands. So it's not just me. A lot of the scientific problems which I'm raising here has been raised by other atheists as well. So the issue here is what Christians do, and that's why they don't participate in this debate, is they just try to smooth it over with 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 with, with personal interpretation and make the problem go away. So yeah, scriptures can be interpreted correctly and should be but it can also be misused. That's what I'm pointing out, what I'm pointing out the problem. But I will return back to you. Where is, how did I use interpretation uh, to, to misrepresent in tonight's debate or to cover up problems? I didn't. I stick with facts. And I hope that you can appreciate and see that. Wonderful question. I appreciate the question. So the reason why I was trying to get you to answer the question about who should interpret the Quran is because I, I wanted to admit that it should be the people that believe in those different versions of the theology. Even with the Quran, there's multiple interpretations between different theologies within the Quran. This idea of scientific miracles actually is a, more of a modern 20th century movement, too. It's not really a historical way that the Quran was approached. So the same thing with the New Testament. I think the people that interpret the New Testament should be the people that believe in that theology. When an atheist goes in and says, no, 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 this must be how it must be interpreted, it's sort of like, um, oh, what's the problem with that? You're trying to do an external critique of internal claim, right? So it, you can't prove their claim is false if they're only seeing their claim mm -hmm. is not a strict interpretation, but it's more of a parable or something like that. So I take the claim for the people for what they say it is, and I'll take strict literal interpretations. That's why I always ask in these debates, can you give me a decoder ring? Because I need a decoder ring for the Quran and the New Testament and the Torah. 
you don't need one for this debate. Look, what's your problem? Where what you're you're ignoring the facts. The scientific study specifically stated that there is something intrinsic about the natures of Islam and Christianity which is causing the study to read the way it is. There is something intrinsic about the what the Bible says about alcohol that is causing this fetal alcohol syndrome. So the problem is your your brain is now focusing on, well, let me interpret things this way, let me interpret things that way, but you're ignoring the facts. The fact, is what you should be concerned about is what is it about the Bible that's causing that? We don't really need to know what it is. That what, what My argument here is, is there is something intrinsic about the teachings of Islam which saves children from fetal alcohol syndrome. Therefore, Islamic teaching is on alcohol, the answer given on alcohol is just a better answer than what we find in the Bible. So the fact that Islam keeps pr producing better answers, I think is undeniable based on the facts, not the interpretations. Okay, next question. Megan Marie, 499, Nadir, do you think that the moon being split in half in the Quran was scientific? Well, that's right. Actually, it's, technically, it's not in the Quran. It is uh, It is found in the Hadith, but this is, well, once again, it's off topic. I would ask for you to please talk about the debate which we just had, but let me answer. This is perfectly fine from scientific point of view about the moon being split in half because this was a miracle done by by God, and therefore science is okay. They don't have any objections against miracles happening. They don't confirm or deny miracles. That's their official position. Now, of course, if the Quran said that the sun was split, I'm sorry, the moon was split, naturally, okay, then this would be considered to be a scientific error, but it doesn't do that. It says this is one of the many miracles of Almighty God, therefore from a scientifically scientific point of view, no problem. Um, it's an empirical claim, so it's investigate. You can investigate it with science. So, unless it also says he healed it perfectly back up, I guess, then it would be a miracle of breaking and healing. Do you have a response to that, Nadir? Yeah, I guess you could try. Uh, you know, investigating, and people do. They investigate Moses splitting the seas. They investigate Jesus walking on water. But at the end of the day. These are miracles. Even if you find nothing, that doesn't prove these stories to be wrong because these are supernatural claims. These are uh, claims of, of the divine, and science really doesn't argue it or for it or against it. So it's perfectly fine to, yeah. to have these types of beliefs and stories on miracles. I, I want to be very clear, really quick. I want to respond to this. It's fine. So I just like, I'm going to remind you that. The question yeah. directed at him, the last and he'll one. get the last word. So no, I ahead. think this is I think this is important to the discussion too. Like I agree, like with an internal critique of the Quran and the Hadiths and stuff, it makes sense that the moon could be split and re put back together because that's the claim you believe about all of that he has a power and ability to do that. But if I do an external critique, like my I'm a naturalist, so I believe that any supernatural claim is false. I believe all miracles are false. And I, I'm justified in that belief. I have my own worldview that I can I can justify and I can argue for. I'd be more interested in that debate than the one trying to defend the Bible. I'm not trying to defend the Bible. I'm just trying to defend rationality, which is what I was trying to appeal to, is the wisdom of um, Muslims in the beginning. But I just want to point that out. Um, you are correct. The, the moon could be split in two and reformed. It's not a scientific claim. It could be true, internally consistent with your worldview. Uh, but it, it's not true it, from my worldview. It, it never happened. It's false. You can have the last word, Nadir, if you like it. Uh, yeah, no, I think we, we agree on this, but I would just reiterate, you know, when you debate a lot of religious people, like let's say there was a Christian Jew or a Hindu here, uh, you would find a lot of interpretative games. You know, my, you know, one of the things I want Ozian to, to recognize is my entire presentation is based upon verifiable, testable facts. And I just want you to now, because I asked you a couple of times, what oh. type of interpretation game have I played? Hold on a and second, you were not able to I think Ozian's that. having audio issues okay. now. Okay. Um, no, it's back. I don't know what happened, but I can hear you again. So, okay. so at least you can acknowledge Ozian that my presentation, all my refutations, is based upon verifiable, 
testable facts. I play no interpretation game because that's where the scientific miracle is. If you put aside all the interpretations, just look at what we know to be factually true, the Quran will be a scientific miracle. I, I, the best argument for the Quran uh, and against Christianity for me is the Trinity, but because I think it's like contradictory, but not all Christians believe in the Trinity either. So like, I don't find any of these arguments convincing for the Quran being more accurate than um, mm -hmm. Christianity because of the precepts built into all these claims in the first place. But that's a different argument. Well, it's because you you have a problem of deciphering and, and taking apart facts versus interpretation. When a fact is presented to you, you begin this interpretation spin in your head. And that's why you're not seeing the scientific miracle. Scientific miracle comes from, from recognizing and isolating the facts and seeing them for what they are. I don't think I have the interpretation problem. I think I'm interpreting as the sco Christian scholars interpret the parables you see. Mm -hmm. aren't being interpreted correctly so i'm doing their scholar like what those scholars say it means not what my own personal okay, so, interpretation so is. How, how do you know they're not covering up problems well i think it's all false so, so they are covering up problems and you're just following their bogus apologetics then right no i'm 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 using their claim so if you argue if you want my claim was in the first place is that none of this is scientific because it doesn't explain why it doesn't give the mechanism it doesn't explain why alcohol causes but fetal does it need problems. to if you're continuously yes. correcting the false science that's not possible for you to correct six pro errors in the bible see just letting just the fact that you know that these are six problems here that in itself is a miracle and i think this is what you're not seeing here so it would have been more of a miracle if um Allah had told Muhammad, or Muhammad to Jibril, Jibril? I always Jibril, pronounce it wrong. Gabriel, yeah. Gabriel, easier for me. But uh, um, why uh, zoonotic disease vectors? Like what the mechanism is and how we can prevent it and how we can take care of livestock and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like Allah should have had the ability, like all-knowing, be able to explain this stuff if he really cared about the health and welfare of the people. He would have explained this is why you clean your hands and given a reason to mm -hmm. the whole world, not the scientific reason, the testable, verifiable sure. reason. To me, that would be the miracle because those are the claims that were completely unknown, like the scientific method entirely. Give us the scientific method so we can explore the knowledge on our own. So th to me, those have been much, much more miraculous than some type of coincidental claim mm -hmm. that happens to be true from the Quran. So to answer that, he actually did do so with the issue of alcohol. He said alcohol is forbidden. Why? Because the harm of it outweighs all the benefits. That's word for word agreement with modern science. So when Allah does do that, you don't recognize it. Well, so he actually did meet you on that challenge. But the question here is, yeah, I mean, of course, he could always provide explanations to make the miracles even more bigger. But what if Allah says, you know what? I've given you enough to show you that this is a sign. And either you accept it or you don't. So to maybe in the eyes of Allah, he's given you enough. And of course, he could give you more, but he has chosen not to. That, See, uh, Ozzy, and at least you can agree tonight from a scientific perspective. You put aside all those interpretations. Islam on those six issues give better answers. Now, whether you want to believe that's a miracle or not, that's a different issue, yeah. but I hope you can at least see that Islam is providing better answers on the six issues I provided. Well, that's the that's the problem here with the it's not ex providing the explanation, so it's not scientific. It might be the case. It might be the case that it was good enough for Allah. He doesn't have to provide the explanation that the, he's already provided enough evidence to the people that he exists mm -hmm. and that his word is true, right? But science isn't about the claim. Science isn't about this provides worse outcomes than this. Science is about the explanation to show you the causes to to show you um how this here ties to this and when it comes to medical stuff like it's all about probabilities and percentages there's no clear causal links with for all, all type of medical claims or psychological claims like there is in the hard sciences so it's a little bit wishy-washy when it comes to some of these claims but the smallest seed man maybe we'll make a smaller seed in a lab in two months and it won't be the the seed we think it is now but 
I think that's the problem we get. Like when you claim it's a scientific claim and not some book of spiritual guidance, you run into a problem of um, creating anachronisms and like post hoc rationalization. It's sort of motivated thinking. I think it should be more of a spiritual and ethical framework for Muslims to use. Um, I'd like to well, move on to the next question if I can, but I do want to adhere to my rule of the question was for Nadir. So um, Nadir, if you could very quickly just close this question, that would be great. Yeah, see, Ozian, whether if something is better or not than something else doesn't require an explanation. Like, for example, wash your hands before you eat, please. That is a better explanation than someone arguing about it. Okay, this is just a better... Uh, now, whether you really know the science or not is irrelevant to the fact that you gave the better answer, you gave the right answer. Yes, go wash your hands before you eat. Okay, especially if you're wiping your hands with something, you know, God knows what. So, so you see, Ozzy, and the problem is you don't, the problem is you don't want to concede to the obvious. That is an obvious answer. It is better than what we're finding in that book because you feel like, okay, if I just concede to Nadir, these are better explanations. Nadir is going to, quote, win the debate. I don't think this is the case. Okay, and I think what's, ha what's happening here is you are trying to, uh, you're trying to avoid the elephant in the room. Okay, not mentioning bad stuff like, you know, the so symptoms of Apple, uh, uh, of these seizures is actually demon possession. You don't mention that. You just say, look, I'm going to pray for you. That's a better explanation. Thank God. That's why Muhammad's name is not in those journals by the scientists accusing the New Testament of causing stigmatization of epileptics. All right. Next question from Dan Shire, 1999, Nadir. You proved the Bible wrong about the mustard seed. Congrats. This is about the Quran. What does the Quran say is the smallest seed? Or what does it say specifically to disprove the biblical claim? Yeah. And, and you know, one of the uh, problems I was going through this very fast, so I didn't actually get to the actual uh, Quranic verse. So uh, let me do that right now. So the, one of the points that I raise is if Muhammad is not a true prophet, then he has to be copying from the Bible. But but the fact... So here's chapter 21, verse 47. Can you guys see my screen? No, right you're there? not sharing anything at the oh, moment. Let me, let me share it real quick here. Chapter 21, verse 47. It says, We will set up the scales of justice on the day of resurrection so that no soul will suffer the least. And even if it be the weight of a mustard seed, we'll bring it up. Sufficient are we the reckoner? So the point which I was raising here is the whole issue about the mustard seed being the smallest seed is nowhere mentioned in the actual text. Now I now I appreciate the the the, the questioner because he wasn't persuaded with the interpretation game to make the problem go away. Oh, this is allegorical, metaphorical. That was the person who was able to read the text, see the explicit contradiction, and say this book is wrong. That's where I feel Ozian is is struggling with. Some people have that a gift. Some people do not. I'm now notice. I'm not playing any interpretation here. I'm just saying there's nothing mentioned about a about a smallest seed of the mustard seed in this text here. So this is clearly a better usage of the mustard seed than what we find in the New Testament. All right. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just again, like you're attacking my reading comprehension ability. I don't know why you do this as part of the debate, but that's okay. Um, no. You might have had more time on spending doing your opening argument if you didn't spend like three minutes attacking other atheists that don't want to debate you anymore on the topic. So maybe if you spent more time on the argument, you would have got into all this stuff and you spent a lot of time poisoning the well in your opening argument. It, um, I don't think that's very good as an interlocutor. It may be why people are avoiding you just some advice from going forward. Um, I don't have a problem with like um, the claims within Islam where you, like you shouldn't drink alcohol. I think that's good. I, I think people should avoid alcohol unless there's some type of medical reason for it. The only problem I have is when you call it a scientific miracle. The, just going back to what my observation of you, Ozzy, and where I feel like you are having the mistake is, you see, you weren't able to read the text the Bible text for itself and see what it explicitly False. says. I think what happened is you got misled by Christian Wait, apologists. No, Christian what was my claim? 
What was my claim? It was allegorical, metaphorical. No, no. And you what tried was my, to explain that away. That was part of my claim. Part of my claim. That you try to, and, but what my point, you see what, what you, what should have happened, Ozzy, and you should have been able to see the deception of Christian apologetics that they're just trying to cover up what is explicitly wrong in their text. And you weren't able to do that. So you came in tonight with this entire interpretation spew and I'm, and, and yeah, see, the thing is, that's not going to work with, with people Wait. with critical mind, like that questioner who asked, who asked this question, he didn't buy it. He's like, no, I see what the Bible is literally Wait. saying here. I'm not going to let you call all my Christian friends deceivers and liars because they don't interpret no, that that's not um, what I'm literally. It, it, you called arguments. them deceitful. You called them deceitful. No, the deer, I, I, you I, did. They, they argue, now, hold on a second. The argument which they tried to plaster over to cover up the mistake uh, in the Bible is something which is very common in all religions. Hindus, Jewish, all people I see, they, they engage in this. I think it's an immediate knee-jerk reaction, but we need to be able to be discerning enough to to start picking apart what is the interpretation spread being put on this text here and what does the text really explicitly say well then That's it's not deceitful see you have an issue with no it's not deceitful if they mean it sincerely like if they look sincerely believe that's the case then it's not being deceitful they're not lying about their own interpretation if they believe their yeah. interpretation is true just to be clear have some, a little bit of humility yeah. maybe when it comes to pe how people interpret their own religious beliefs, I said the mustard seed was not the smallest seed. Yeah, well, I, I, so I'm I, not I was correct. It, I was correct when I said that, right? Mustard seed is not the small seed. My argument was that it was not a scientific claim. Uh -huh. And I explained why it wasn't a scientific claim. No, what my argument, though, is that the usage of the mustard seed, how Muhammad used it, is much better than the problematic way of what we find in the Bible. That's all I'm arguing. All right. Next question. John Michael B., 5 Canadian. In the Quran, the fetus is created by bones first, then flesh slash muscle. After, not scientific at all. Islam is false. Kind of off topic. So I think what's happening is they really couldn't find, uh, you know, a, a error in my logic and my presentation tonight. So they're trying to score points outside. Now we're going to talk about embryology. And uh, going back to the question, is it bones first, flesh? I'm sorry, I didn't really understand what he said was the, was, was the problem there. You said that the Quran said that the fetus is created by bones first, then flesh muscle. Bones first, and then flesh, and then muscle? Yeah, does the Quran uh, say that? Uh, well, let's get to the verse, which I think okay. he might be referring 23, to. 2314, or is that the one? Uh, the then fashioned we the drop of semen, a yeah. clot of congealed blood, so fetuses are not developed from semen, developed from an egg. Mm -hmm. well, first of all, so that's the first part that's wrong. Well, I think, I think, I think hold on a second. <laughs> let me then, get, uh, let me show, I think we got the, the verse here. Of, if you Ron, can see on the screen. Yeah, can you see the screen right, which yeah. I have on? So the I first have... part's wrong in the beginning. Like the first oh. sentence is wrong. Well, wait a second. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm confused. What What's wrong now? Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging drop, and we made the clot into a lump of flesh. That is wrong. That's all absolutely correct. But no, I can that's only deal with one wrong. issue at a time. Absolutely wrong. What's the wrong. thing about flesh, about bones? And let me, let me address that first. Then I'll get to your issue about the clot and something or another. Um, okay. So can you guys see my screen over here? Yeah, yeah. The, okay, sure, wonderful. Yeah, sure so the here. actual text, it says, we covered the bones with flesh. So I think he's trying to say, no, 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 no. Bones do not, uh, are not covered with flesh. Now, let's see what science actually says. Or it says, actually, and, and, we, and we closed the bones with flesh. So let's get to the scientific reference. This is from Professor Keith Moore. It says, first, bones were formed. And cartilage models and as then the, cartilage as oh, cartilage. Hold on a second. Let me please read. Please, please, please. First bones, uh, first the bones form as cartilage, and and then the muscles develop around them. So do do mo, do bones cover the? Uh, I'm sorry. Do do does flesh cover the bones? Yes. But I want to get to no, you. It uh, says uh, it covers the cartilage, then it turns into bones. Okay. So let's talk about that claim. That what you're saying is that it was never a phase in which bones was actually created. It's all cartilage. 
well, where is your reference for that? That would be my first, uh, my first argument right there. You know, when you say things, you should have a reference for that. Nowhere does science actually say that. So let's deal with this latest uh, canard that is actually, look what the Quran said. And we cover the bones as flesh here. Now let's, now I know this is kind of hard to read. Uh, I'll give you the link. It says, listen to what it says. Limb muscles develop in situ from the mesenchyme and around the developing limb bones. Did you about see that? Six, about six and seventh week, yes. Okay, so do muscles cover the bones? Yes. Now listen around to what the this, sixth and seventh week. Yes. Now listen to what this professor Zach Murphy has to say. He says, "Remember, we talked about how uh, about how we make the skull and all the bones and cartilage and all that stuff. What are we? Okay, now listen to what he says here. What are we covering all that with now? The muscle, word for word." agreement with modern science now, i don't even think professor zachary murphy so, even knew he was basically echoing exactly word for word what the quran said because the quran uh, said that we covered the we covered the bones um, let me get to the verse uh, real quick i keep forgetting what it yeah i'm sorry and we covered the bones with flesh okay and that's exactly what professor murphy was said in his lecture lecture yeah. we covering all that was now the muscle Okay, so there you go. It is actually in one hundred percent agreement flesh, with modern science. The flesh forms before the bones do. That you agree with that, right? But we actually don't care because the Quran doesn't talk about which gets. Well, I'm just first. asking you a question. Well, the, no, the problem I'm not, is, it's not a contradiction yeah. of the Quran, yeah, but you do I, agree I actually, that uh, no, flesh I, forms I, before I, I, the bone. I would say the bones has to form first, and then the flesh has to. Well, that and, that that's not what it says under embryology. The flesh well, forms it's before irrelevant. the bones do. It's so irrelevant the because the Quran doesn't talk about which one gets formed first or last, so we don't need to go there. Well, then what? do you believe that the science where the flesh forms first before the bones form? I am the, actually... The no, I think science actually says the bones well, form. Then first. let me share a screen. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Well, you got to unshare. Oh, there you go. Here, I'll just screen this stinking snippet here because I don't want to read it all. I hate I can't see it. But here it says, the process begins between the sixth and seventh week of embryonic development and continues until the age of 25 weeks. Uh, the process of bone formation starts between the sixth and seventh week. So bones don't start forming until the sixth and seventh week. Okay. And? So, it, so yeah. So the flesh begins to form before the bones do. It's, that's just the claim. I mean, that's well, what we know under science. Well, let, let, let you know. Yes. Yeah, well, first of all, you can Quran, interpret it the way you want let, to. I'm let, just seeing the flesh. Well, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. Look, we could have a debate on embryology, you know, at a later time. But care. let's let's focus on what we <laughs> you read from Islam. Watch. That's good. Well, well let's let, go to the let, first one. Let, let let's focus on what the topic of tonight's debate is, and then we can do an embryology scientific debate. miracles. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, can we go to the first one of that? Claim it like I, I think we need to get back on topic. We could talk about embryology. The, the debate, the debate Nadir, yeah. is over. The topic yeah. is is moot. This is audience yeah. asking questions um, to the people who are the experts on sure, certain but topics in this case. So we need to talk about what was debated, though. That's my point. I I spent a lot of time on. Do you believe babies this. come from eggs or semen? What's that? Do you believe that eggs, the babies, the fetus? Develops from the egg or the semen? I don't know. What do you? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Well, just basic fertilization. So the baby, the fetus, develops from the. You actually don't need a semen to develop a baby. You don't. You can you can do cloning without it. There's also right. other ways. I believe okay. that eggs can develop um, without semen. I, I can't mm -hmm. remember what the technical term. Is for that, but what happens is that the sperm swims a bunch of sperm swim along. Yeah, yeah. One penetrates the egg, and then the the embryo develops from the egg. So the claim talks about this semen, but this comes from our understanding from the Greeks, from Aristotle, who mm -hmm. believe fetuses develop from the sperm, not from the egg, because we couldn't rip a person open and see the eggs, right? right we could, right. we we knew that sperm came out, right? Like we knew that. So like, and so it would make sense that 
they would see that, okay, based on the knowledge at the time, right, common knowledge about fetal development, we see fer sperm, so it, it makes sense that it would follow from that, that babies come from sperm and not eggs. But we know scientifically that's not the case. Okay. Now, yeah. you can reinterpret this, and this is where I'm going to be fair. You can, you can, you can reinterpret this however you want to. Which verse are you referring to? Um, Quran twenty three fourteen, the one you pulled up. What 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 does it say that is so problematic? They, then fashioned we the drop of semen, a clot of congealed blood, which is not a clot of congealed blood, either, right? Yes, it then is. Then fat semen is not a clot of congealed blood. Well, just read read the verse, and you want to talk about clot? We could talk about that. Just, Are you just saying semen is a clot of congealed blood? Well, I'm so, read the text, and I'll and I'll and I'll respond. Then fashioned we the drop semen, a clot of congealed blood. Then fashioned we the clot, a little lump fetus. Mm -hmm. So uh, is your is your uh, problem here that it talked about the semen turning into a clot? Is that what your argument? I need, I need to be clear what you're talking about. The, the, yeah, they converted the semen. We then fashioned we did semen, a clot, a congealed blood. Is it saying it turned it into a clot of congealed blood? Or is it saying the semen is a clot of congealed blood? So the actual, and that's Surah 23, verse 10, right? 23, 14, I think. 23, 14. So this one verse, which is being interpreted as clot, you do realize it has three different meanings, right? That's fine. Um, I don't care. So the, the is, word there, clot. It's, it's a very famous word because that word which you are referring to is alaka. And alaka has three different meanings. Number one, it means clot. Number two, something which hangs. You know, and number three, it means something which is like a leech, like a leech like substance. The astonishing scientific miracle about this one Arabic word is that every meaning clot, leech, and something which clings accurately describes the embryo. So you might ask, well, how does uh, how does a clot actually uh, describe the embryo? Well, there is a period in embryonic development where the actual embryo is filled with blood but that blood is not circulating that uh, that resembles a clot and by the way that has been submitted to the scientists and in peer reviewed studies which we submitted that as a scientific miracle so scientists themselves have had a look on it now the second meaning no scientist is going to see this is true not not a single one oh yes they uh, have oh dr. bullshit keith moore. dr you, keith moore. Oh, oh i don't one guy I don't care okay. about his post hoc interp okay, interpretation. First you said nobody. Well, okay, saying... one guy. But okay, so well, he's obviously you... motivated, moti has motivated thinking when it comes to this. That's a post hoc okay. interpretation. Okay, hold on a second. How many? Fetus okay. comes from an egg, dude. It doesn't come from okay. the semen. It comes How from many, the okay. egg. Okay, let, that, you first you said no scientist would, I, would I agree, agree with this. One. Okay, so what if I show you more? That a fetus comes from a sperm and not the no, egg? No, no, the, the issue about alaka, the clot, how it has three different meanings, and they saw this as being a scientific miracle. Let me, do, can you guys see my screen? I'm going to share my desktop here real quick. You know, like, miscarriages happened, right? Okay. Like, you can see this Wait, stuff come out of I, body. I'm addressing with one, of your blood. argument. You said, you said that but they're no not scientists of blood. would really agree with this verse. I'm showing, if you can see my screen, I'm showing you three. Professor Keith Moore, which is one of them, TVN Prasad, uh, Department of Anatomy of University of Manitoba, and E. Marshall Johnson. They what all talk about this word. What they they what they were astonished by the scientific accuracy of the Quran. Now remember what now remember the Quran actually has three mean. I mean that word has three meanings: leech, and something which clings, and and a, and a clot. So it could mean any one of the three, or it could mean all three. However, what caught the, sci the, the eyes of the scientists is leech and something which clings. They, According to these three embryologists, which I have pointed out to you, that's exactly what how you describe the embryo. Now, let me... Now, those Embryo's are three... Embryo's not me, a leech unless you consider like a parasite okay. or something like that, so which you're some saying people it's not do, a leech. I guess. Now, no, let me correct you on that. Okay. First of all, this is... Um, they don't suck the word leech. Now, let me show you a book on embryology. In that book of embryology, this is a guy who knows nothing of the Quran. He knows nothing about Islam. Listen to what he what he says. This is Anatomy Demystified, uh, a self-teaching guide by Dr. Dale Lehman. He's totally oblivious to Islam. Listen to what he says here. He says over here, 
Another membrane becomes the yolk sac, which provides nourishment for the, for the early embryo. By, by 24 days, the connection stalk appears in the middle of the, of the now worm-like body. Did okay. you see that? He's Not calling a it a worm. Well, that's a pretty much what <laughs> a very good so uh, description of a leech. Okay. And the yolk sac is hanging <laughs> off to one side of the connecting stock. What was the other meaning of alaka? Something which is hanging, something which is clinging. So even in this one description by a scientist who knows nothing about Islam, he described two meanings of the word alaka. That's why these scientists are very excited with the, with with uh, uh, with this uh, uh, you know description of the embryo. So it's this is leash. actually backfired on the questioner. He's actually showing the scientific miracle of the book. Right. That no, even um, scientists he, today. So gentlemen, are just hang on. Yes. If we spend twenty minutes on every question, we can go uh, on. We are going to be here a yeah. very, very long time. Um, but yeah, that questioner got their money's worth for sure. Um, next question: Elusive Viper, five dollars. A scientific study. Over a Quranic claim does not make the Islamic claim science. Faith claims can't be scientific. This entire topic is a category error. Well, actually, no. Uh, the first of all, the problem here is none of what he's actually talking about is related to our debate. The issue, the argument I have presented here, is <clears throat> the Quran and Islam is providing better answers from a scientific perspective than what we see in the Bible. And I think Ozian accepts that. I think Ozian wants an explanation behind each one. He wants additional information before he makes that call. But I think he can see this is just a better answer. And that's what I'm pointing out to be is a scientific miracle. Because first of all, the question which I'm asking, how did a man 1400 years ago know that these are problematic passages in the Bible and they need better answers. How did you know that? And to be able to uh, to provide better answers, that is miraculous. So the whole issue of what he's talking about, whether a scripture is science, this is all his own wacky, quacky interpretation. Nothing of what he is saying actually is backed by science or facts. Well, it's not knowledge because he didn't provide the justification for the claim. And it, we don't know if it's actually true in that case either. Some of these claims are, yeah, are up to interpretation, like with fetal development. So, well, fetal development wasn't part of this debate. I mean, it kind of came up in the question and answers, but the issue which needs to be acknowledged is Islam is better on these issues. That's okay. what I need acknowledgement from. Well, well I mean, you're not going to get it. But if I can show any claim in the, in the, Quran doesn't match the scientific consensus, you would just like reinterpret the claim. So okay, you're my not... promise to you, Ozian, how much I, you know, criticized you tonight saying that you are just playing interpretation. But it's okay game. to do that. Okay, but Ozian, now here's why I did that. Okay. Because I want you to hold me to the same standard. If yeah. I play any interpretation game in, in trying to explain away the alleged scientific errors, then you call me out on that. Okay, so that's my pledge to you. That's my pledge to everybody. And that's part of the scientific miracle of Islam that you don't need to play interpretation games to, to, to try to explain away the alleged errors. Rather, we present scientific facts and scientific research like I did with the whole thing about embryology. None of that was some kind of interpretation game, okay? I presented factual uh, information with links. Anybody who has questions on it, I'll provide you the information with those links and you can research it yourself too. All right. Next question, $5 from a um, person with symbols for names. Um, there is a hadith where the Muhammad said that flies carry disease on one wing and the antidote on another. Mm -hmm. That is just plain wrong. Uh, sounds like more like a question, but if any of you guys want to add to that. You know, I'm, I've heard of it. I'm not familiar with it. Like, yeah. So let's let's see what be a science... parable. Who cares? Well, yeah. Well, I'm not going to play any kind of interpretation game. Now, of course, I could do. I could. I could. I could explain it away as a parable or something, something like that. But I won't. I will. I will actually present something from science, um, which which can substantiate that. Okay. So let's see what uh, what science actually says about this. What are you eating, by the way? 
Potato chips? Yeah, my son bought me his dinner, Oh, okay, so gotcha. it's They're making late, me hungry. but sorry. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so here we go. Here is an article on this topic, and let's see what it says over here. Um, blah 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 blah. Okay, so the the issue here is it's the latest anti uh, the news of the buzz of, on on antibiotics. So to uh, uh, well, let's see if I can find, find the actual text here. Blah 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 blah. blah. I didn't underline what I wanted to read actually here. Um, can can you summarize? Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. The antibiotic material is extracted by drowning the flies in ethanol. Isn't that exactly what Muhammad said? You dip it uh, and by running the mixture through the filter to obtain the crude extract. So according to science, it says over here that the antibiotic For some of the diseases are actually found on the very fly itself, and it comes by drowning the fly in ethanol. Now, the point here is, Muhammad, of course, because he can see the future as a prophet, he must have saw a vision, so he's just explaining it in his own words, and so he might have gave a very vague uh, definition or he could vision of what we see over here. So, no, it's not scientifically incorrect at all. Well, it's one wing versus the other, I think, is the other part of the queen. But that's okay. I don't All right, really next, care about coincidences. Next question from Robin Page. $10. Ozian, check out the critical historical research of Jay Smith on the history of the standard Islamic narrative. His YouTube channel is P. Fander Films. He thoroughly debunks Islam's history. The uh, history so I, of Islam? Yeah, I guess it's just some... Uh, I guess She's it's told just me a... about it before. I I can't. Thank you. He Well, Fander you know films. what? Yeah. Uh, what, what what I would say to that is I'd say look at my debate with uh, Jay Smith on this very topic. If you just Google my name and his name, and you will see how he was not able to answer how Islam is uh, correcting the scientific errors of the Bible. But I think what needs to be pointed out over here, of course, we're talking about. Well, I'm entertaining any questions about scientific errors of the alleged scientific errors of Islam, and I'd love to do that debate. Uh, but do Christians participate in these type of debates? The answer is no. Jay Smith and all these Christians that you are championing here, they are very, very careful in participating in debates which highlight the errors of the Bible. So at least Muslims are willing to come forward to talk about these things. Jews, Christians, Hindus, and other religions do not open up their books for scientific inquiry, for scientific uh, uh, criticism, because they know that the scientific errors in their books are indefensible. So you should give me credit, you should give Islam credit, because we are the only religion that participates in these type of debates. Like humans evolved from apes, right? You believe that. Well, no, I don't believe that. Oh, okay. But we could talk again. We could talk. But my point to you, Ozian, um, at I, least no, again, try to have gonna, this discussion with a Christian. It's yeah, not going to happen. I do. I have. You're I be have here all night, gentlemen. I have debates with Christians on evolution. I have debates with Christian on young no, no, Earth. No. I have debates with Christian on the flat Earth too. You yeah. can see I've had like nine debates with Christians on here about all no. various different. I had a debate with um, Kyle Adams about. atheism versus theism i Yes. do these debates with Yes. christians Okay, let me, okay, here's my point. They will entertain the type of debates you are talking about. That's true. But when it comes to talking about the scientific errors, like on epilepsy, slave beating, these type of topics, the majority of Christians, they will not participate in these type of debates, especially on how Islam is correcting the scientific errors in their books. Christians stay clear of these type of debates that will do catastrophic damage to their faith, and they have really no good answers for. So Jay Smith isn't a Christian? He is a Christian, and he's staying away from the scientific error uh, debates. He's he's They're really running away. Uh, the point here is, when we talk about slavery, when we talk about, you should give us credit, we're here to debate these really tough topics, but I the do. Christians will not. I, I appreciate it's easier for me to find Muslims to debate than is Christians because I they don't like my arguments for atheism. Yeah. But 
that's a different argument because I think I'm much better than a lot of these people arguing for atheism too, but I okay. think we should go on. I agree. Um, Samar Farsain, $5. The Quran states that mountains are like pegs stabilizing the earth. This has been confirmed by science. What's your objection here, Ozian? Mountains are like pegs stabilizing the earth? Yeah, it's been confirmed by science. What's your objection here, Ozian? Um, mountains are not pegs stabilizing the, the earth. Like the earth is stabilized because of gravity and its orbit around the sun. There's no reason for land masses exist, existing. They, he's just presupposing it must be the way it is, and this is why it is the way it is. So um, I can't remember the fallacy that is, but that's okay. Okay. Dan Shire, 999, over 600 pages, and you've boiled it down to six points to prove the Quran is scientific. Are there any claims made in the Quran that are inaccurate according to science? I assume this no. is Furman Nadir. Yeah, so that's what we had some debates. I'd ask for you to look, watch some of those. I mean, this is where, you know, Islam is in 100% agreement with modern science. There are no scientific contradictions in the book. And this is one of the many miracles of the book. The miracle which, and, and part of that miracle is today, atheists and people here on modern day debate are recognizing that fact. They have seen the past debates on these topics and they, they're convinced that yes, it's the Islam has an airtight case. That That is why they are not coming forward uh, and they're very reluctant to debate uh, is the Quran uh, scientifically correct? I can't find anybody. Ozian came forward to fill that void. So one of the evidences and why you should feel confident that the, the Quran is 100% correct is because here on modern day debate, it is reaching a state of unchallengeability. Nobody here on modern day debate or really elsewhere is going to come forward to debate or, and, and try to challenge that claim, that truth claim, because they've watched those past debates and they see that the Islamic side makes more sense. Well, I'm, I'm looking at a poll right here that says 86% of the people right now watching don't agree with you. They have already walked in with those preconceived ideas. They've already walked in with those preconceived notions. So that doesn't so prove not, anything. Look, look. Then your claim is, then your other claim then your claim you just made mm -hmm. about the audience agreeing with you no, is not the false. Audience. No, no, well, no, no, no. Then it's the, not the audience that agrees hold with on you let me, on let modern me, day debate. Okay, let's 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 get past this quackology. I would which say most I Muslims Look, don't agree with you either when it comes to these claims. Actually, that's not true. Look, you could have one debate here, okay? You upload it to the Christian side, you upload it to the Muslim side. You are going to find the exact same thing in the comments. Everybody's praising and, and cheerleading one side. And, and the same thing. How could you have one debate where there's two winners? That doesn't make any sense. But that happens every time here on modern day debate. So I really don't care what 86% says because those same 86% are just going to cheer their team. And, and so that's You're ridiculous. Correct. The point which I'm trying to make to you, look at the atheists. I don't want to mention their names, but look at those atheists with the big YouTube channels. Why are they not coming forward to debate the Quran and science? They're not. Okay, they're all running away. And the reason why is because they suffered terrible debate defeats and they don't want to, they know they continue to debate the Quran and science. It's going to destroy their credibility and YouTube channel because they don't have good answers for the scientific accuracy of the Quran. That's why I, this Quran is, in, is reaching an unchallengeable state because there truly are nobody here except you know, maybe one or two people here and there who are really willing to challenge its credibility now because they're convinced. Well, this is my first debate on the topic, and I, it's not like the audience is here for me either. Like, eight, I don't know, but whatever. But it is not the audience of these debates right here that agree with you. See, the people, uh, I think the 90% of the people who come to MDD, they come here to to, to throw rotten tomatoes at islam or pretty anybody who basically tries to uh, promote religion 90 percent of them really didn't even pay attention to the debate to begin with and you'll see that 90 percent of all the comments are all going to be directed at throwing mud at me but no intelligent discourse or breakdown of the of the actual arguments itself you see like daniel the hickey teach he brings right, an audience move on. sorry i just uh 
yeah, more super chats are coming in. Uh, and you guys are like 10 minutes a question at this stage. So <laughs> let's get going. <laughs> um, uh, Bitter Truth, $5. Nadir Epilepsy. Hadith said nothing for cure, but says, I will invoke Allah to cure, which is not science. Uh, sounds more like a, a comment. Um, I'm, I'm not even, we're just going to go to the next question, Nadir. Mark Reed, $10. Nadir, why are you ignoring the unscientific claim in the Quran lie, demon possession? Why won't you debate me on the subject? Who, who is that? Who's saying that? Mark Reed. Yeah, I'll do. Look, Mark, I will debate you so long as you acknowledge the fact that other atheists with bigger channels are not debating me on Quran and science. Once you acknowledge that and you admit that, you know, whether it's Aaron Raw, Matt Dillahante, uh, apostate prophet, they have all now ran away from the Quran and science and you are filling the void left behind. Uh, then, yes, let's do it. I'll just contact James and we can do it. And, and we can debate the science in the Quran, whatever you like. No problem. Mark's so I better... never said no to him. Just contact James and I'll do it. And that's part of the scientific miracle that we are willing and ready to debate anywhere, anytime. But the Christians, no, 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 they won't do that. And I think we need to question that. Hindus will not do that. Jews will not do that. Muslims are ready. Okay. And Mark, I hope you can appreciate our willingness to do so. Mark's a better debater anyways. You should want to debate Mark. He's a what? He's a better debater, atheist debater. Yeah. So I, you should want to debate Mark than those sure. other people you talked about. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm open with. I'm open for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's going to challenge. What, what's happening is people are jumping out of the audience to fill the void left behind by the retreating uh, a atheist apologists. Once again, have been defeated. Once again, Mark's not an audience member. He's appeared on this channel like fifteen yeah. times That's or something fine. like That's that, fine. and debates probably more often than you have. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. Challenge accepted, Mark. Sign me up. Um, Big Snag sends... Okay, so I don't, I'm not understanding. Big Snag sends $2. Um, science versus Muhammad is the point of this debate? Uh, the point no, of this the, debate... Was, yeah, no. Is the Quran scientific? I can even... It's right there in our headline. Um, right, Muhammad right. was uh, not necessarily specific in the topic. Um, next question from Cal $10 for Nadir. The Quran says alcohol is forbidden because it's good, not because it's bad. You were debunked about this when you debated Christian Prince. Why continue repeating the alcohol myth? So uh, there's many wacky, quacky interpretations over here. Well, first of all, Christian Prince is another coward on the run. He has been challenged to come here to debate on modern day debate and have do you see him do you see him anywhere no because he's a con artist what he does he conducts sham debates a sham debate is where you control what your opponent says when he can say and mute at any time he put me in that position and when i realized oh my god i'm in a sham debate i try to get the heck out of there you know at least we got a fair debate going here on modern day debate but alhamdulillah many of his own followers notice he's pulling a Christian prince is pulling off a sham debate and uh, they came to modern day debate. They contacted James personally. They said, we'd like CP to come here and debate because that's a more fair platform. And he ran away like a rat. Okay. You can, you can contact Christian prince. You can say, Hey, is the facts which Nadir are giving you true? He's not going to deny them. So these are all con artists on the internet. He has been, uh, you know, you know, refuted many times. But the question I have for you is why can't you bring Christian Prince over here on MDD and let's have that debate? Why not? Go and ask him. I'm ready. I don't own him because slavery is immoral. But um, like I wanted to be Owen Benjamin on the moon landing hoax because I think he's an idiot when it comes to the moon landing. Mm -hmm. But I'm not calling him out because he won't debate me because he has no idea who I am. Like, like they don't have to debate us if they don't want to. Like, that's just part of the game um grow an audience get bigger then maybe more people will want to debate you like i don't know like i, I want to debate the daniel hikachi a kikachi uh, think he'll ever debate me that, i mean that's not even really what the question was whether why nadir was still using an argument when this questioner believes that 
that argument was yeah. was debunked. It wasn't we. It wasn't any question about Nadir's already debated him apparently, according to Nadir. So well, well what happened was calling out he, every, he's debate. calling out all these people not wanting to debate him. It's like, oh, dude, just, no, no, no. Like, what, just what, moving what on, was, man. What I was calling out was Christian Prince is that he tried to conduct a sham debate and he deceived this poor guy who asked the question. And so uh, that really wasn't a debate at all. I was trying to, and so I hope the questioner can see the, the problem that he didn't refute my alcohol argument in any way at all. But one thing, Ozzy, and I wanted to point out to you, you see, there's a difference. I, I uh, accept it, that, you know, uh, it's, yeah. I don't, I don't want you to point out anything okay. uh, to Ozzy and we, we, we're going to okay. get going. Um, this thing's getting long in the tooth a little bit, uh, although we love having you guys and the debate's great. But sure, sure. Um, we got Robin Webster, $2, uh, says that it is foolish to say any holy book is scientific. Um, that's her comment. We'll just let that mm -hmm. comment stand. Um, Dan Shire, 1999. Dan Shire with the, the big super chats today. The debate topic is, is the Quran scientific? You have argued the Bible is worse in... You have painted Oz as a defender of the Bible. Do you have any evidence to support that the Quran is scientific as a standalone text? Well, the, the person is missing the point here of the whole debate. The issue here is, how did Muhammad know that these six points which were raised in tonight's debate were problematic from a scientific perspective? That's what I am showing is a scientific miracle. How and how, that's the first question. How did you know these were problematic issues? And the second question tonight, how were you able to provide better answers? That's where the scientific miracle is. I think it's undeniable by looking at all six points, Muhammad's answers on all these points now, of course, are, are better, but to Ozian's point, well, I would I want more elaboration on why you're arguing these things, why you're taking this position. Okay, yeah, I mean, we could, we could talk about that, but I don't think that changes the fact that Muhammad's answer is by far a superior answer, and whether if it's answering all the issues like, you know, other animals, you know, giving rabies and, and, and zoonotic diseases, we could definitely talk about that. But that doesn't change the fact. So that's where the, the questioner needs to, to look at and focus. How is Muhammad doing these two things? Okay. Um, Bitter Truth sends $2. Nadir, uh, orca seed is the smallest, not mustard. Did I say that word right. right? Orchid seed? Oh, they yeah, resent, that's correct. They resent it again, retyped orchid seed is the smallest, not mustard. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Bitter Truth, for... Sending a corrected super chat with another two dollars. Um, yeah, Muhammad could have known that, but he didn't. Um, the calmly Bengali sends five pounds. How does Nadir explain the hadith that said the sun setting in warm water? I can give you a reference without super chat, though. it's a flatter at steps. Oh, yeah, um, uh, yeah. So, I think what's happening here is, um you know, there the people are, you know, here, I wish he would have focused on the actual topic of the debate. And now they're just trying to disprove the Quran, the fallacy, which I oh, see no. is happening. They're thinking that, OK, if I could try to find an error in the Quran, it'll make all the evidence go poof. All the evidence tonight will just go poof if I just try to show some kind of error. Was... But but let's hypothetically say I just agree with uh, with your with your notion that there's some kind of error in the Quran. This evidence which I've presented isn't going to go poof. Okay, it's still going to be there today and tomorrow. And the uh, only a true prophet of God can achieve what we have witnessed tonight, irregardless of whether you find errors in any uh, other part of the book. Look, I'll give you an example. In light of all the errors we we have seen tonight, is in the, the Bible, example going to be quick? Sorry, Nadir, I just want to know. Yeah. That. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I still believe Jesus is the Messiah. I still believe there's God's word in the book, in the Bible. I still believe in Moses. So the scientific errors really didn't change that belief. It just changed my belief of the reliability of these books. But the issue about the sun setting in the pool of a murky waters, nowhere does the Quran say that the sun physically enters into a pool of murky waters or anything like that. I have more to say on that, but I'll just wait for a time when we can debate that. All right. Thank you, sir. Isa Kaber, two dollars. Are y'all coming to the after show on Matters Now? I'll be there. Are you coming, uh, Nadir? 
Oh, yeah, of course. I, I I come to every party I'm invited to. Awesome. Yeah. Appreciate you. Um, awesome. Uh, I'll make sure that you get the link before you go. Okay. Um, Robin Webster sends $2 um, asking, why is Ozian expected to defend the Bible? You already asked that. Talking... Did I? Uh, sort of. Um, well, uh, no, that's not... what... That was his error, trying to defend the Bible, in well, my I'm opinion. De- I'm not defending the Bible. You but... try to provide allegorical reasonings behind really ignorant things like arguing over washing hands. That was no. wrong of you, Ozian, for doing that, in I my argue, opinion. I argued the Bible wasn't a scientific claim, and they're not claiming the it's The issue here is Muhammad gave the better answer on washing hands. That's you got to accept that, okay? It's just a better answer. No, and, I, there's no reason for ritual... Washing wash hands. You your should wash, hands you before should wash. you eat. That's it's not worth... what it says in the except the hadiths, right? The Quran it's says you wash. The Quran says you wash your hands, wipe your head, and wash your feet. You have to go to the hadiths, and that's before you pray. You go to mosque. You wash your hands. You wash. You wipe your head and you wash your feet. Right. The text. <clears throat> no, the text. That's the Quran. No, that's, that's the Quran. not the Quran. The that's text... not in the Quran. No, the wudu is, I think, is in the hadith. That what, no, no, the hadith explains the ritual Ozean. you follow. Ozean. I looked this up the other day. I know you, 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 what you're missing here is the text did explicitly say that Muhammad used to wash his hands before he ate. That is in the hadith. That, yes, in the hadith. Yes, but, but the Quran talks about washing your hands, wiping your head, and washing okay. your feet before All you I'm pray. Saying, that's a lot you, better than arguing about it. <laughs> but can you, you not see that you have to go to the deeds to learn it's wash your hand three times okay. wipe your head three times wash your feet three times whatever it is and i i think you, i'm not an expert of islam you, you're but not I know really, that's the case. you're not really refuting what i'm saying but you I'm said you didn't know that was in the quran how could you not know that's in the okay quran? you're not really disagreeing with what i'm saying so let's move on see so, so the Quran does say to wash your hands and wash your feet and wipe your head, right? Yes. Well, I think that's in the Hadith. I think it's in the Hadith. Okay. Any Muslims can super chat it. Like, um, yeah, all right. Good. So next question is from Robin Page for $5 saying, Nadir, the topic or the debate topic was, is the Quran scientific? And you spent the entire debate um, instead attacking Christianity to an atheist. Did I do that, Ozian? What's that? I'm um, attacking did, 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 did I just did, did Nadir did, spend the, the debate attacking Christianity to an atheist? That, is that really what this debate was about, Ozian? What do you think? I think it was was the Quran scientific, but you turned it into which is more likely to the New Testament or the Quran. Um, so it wasn't really upon the scientific yeah. efficacy of the two claims. It was which one provided the ex- best explanation. And my argument was neither does. Okay. Well, the, 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 obviously, if Ozian can understand it, other people can understand what happened in tonight's debate, that I was showing how one book is correcting the mistakes of the other book. That's a miracle. It doesn't, you don't have to be a, an atheist or a Christian. Anybody can see that. So that's why, I'm, and, and the reason why actually Ozian is, 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 is participating is because the Christians will not. They will not participate in a debate like this. Okay. And because they saw that what happened to other Christians who have, and they don't want to be next. So the issue, the scientific miracle, is one book predicting and correcting the mistakes of the other book. Uh, okay, next question, Bitter Truth, $5. Ozian, some homework for you. Please check chapter I pulled it up. 96, verse 2 in the Quran, says we created human from aliqua. Alaka. Which means Alaka, a clinging clot. clot. Or blood clot. Its error never said look like. I mean, oh that's God. that's that's just like I said. It's not a scientific claim. It's a, it's it was our best understanding of embryology at the time, and it was false. But that's okay. You can you can do. We've uh, already talked about alaka, man. How is it? We're going right back. It's super it, chats. They come in sequence. Like we, well, the, some of these super chats were sent in an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's okay. So yeah. There's we a, already there's talked some about that. Missing. Yeah. Okay. And fair enough. Yeah. Um, all right, so we've got one more super chat here uh, that I'm going to read, um, and I'm going to try to answer it. So from Big Snag, $5, the Bible isn't in the title. 
but it's brought up every sentence from Nadir. Why does the moderator let him bring it up when it's not on the topic? So um, my reason for allowing Nadir to use the Bible was because, first of all, he brought it up in his opening statement. So as far as I'm concerned, these are the tools he brought to the debate to use as part of his argument. He's citing the Bible to try to prove his Quran is scientific. Um, and Ozian would have been the one in the position to either dismiss or argue that it is not a valid tool. Um, whether he agrees that it is a valid tool or not, he entertained it. It's not me for it's not for me to come and make Ozian's arguments. Um, that's the reason why I allowed it. Primarily because Nadir brought it in his opening statement, and I believe the opening statement is, here are the tools and the weapons I'm going to bring to this debate. And here we are. Um, also, not being an expert on the Bible or the Quran myself, I believe there's a fair amount of overlap between the two texts. So, and there's right. that. Right, there's overlap. Yeah, so um, that's why I allowed it so much. Um, I accept maybe I should have called it out a little more. But I'm the guy in this chair. Uh, I emailed James one day about wanting to be a moderator. And if you would like to moderate some debates, uh, you're welcome to email and suggest. We welcome all people to want to participate in this channel. The channel is all about an open platform for people to come have discussions. And that's what we've had today. We've had a discussion. Um, and now Ozian's going to go host an after show. Nadir, I believe you're more than welcome to go join over there. Should be. Um, but real quick, should be Max hosting, but yeah, well, that's okay. Um, so real quick, Ozian, where can any be, anybody find you on the internet any given day? Is it debate over? Debate's um, over. That's it. Oh, good. A matter is now, uh, or <laughs> Ozian talks. Ozian, you can find me on Ozian talks all over the place. I have a gaming channel, Ozian plays too. Um, but yeah, I do most of my content right now on matters now with Justin also. And, uh, we have a team there with an anathema who's in the, uh, mod in the chat and with I killed Earl. Um, so come check us out. We're doing an after show after this, and we're gonna have all three of us will be there. It'd be cool on the after yeah. show. Come on stage and um, chat with us. It'll be it'll be a chill scene where the debate's over. Of course, there might be a little bit of pushback, and you know, but the debate's over. It's an after show. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Nadir, where can or do you do you have a channel? Do you have anything coming up? People can check you out. Your camera went out of focus there, bud, but Sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, let me see. Yeah, actually, I think I have a YouTube channel here. Uh, I think if you just type my name uh, and just type you, Nadir YouTube channel, you can you can go there. Uh, unfortunately, I don't maintain it, but I plan to do so more in the future. So yeah. Um, I missed the super chat. Do you guys mind if I ask it real quick? I oh sure. Know, I don't know how I overlooked it. Um, from I killed... how much did he pay? Uh, she paid ten dollars, so it's, oh, I don't want to miss it. They just yes. called me out on the chat, and I was like, "Oh crap!" They were worried it was too spicy, but it wasn't too spicy. I just legit forgot. Well, I mean, they wrote it in caps, but I'm assuming this is an error. <laughs> um, no one cares what the Bible says in this debate, Nadir. The Bible being wrong doesn't make the Quran correct. A better answer, yeah. does it make it the correct answer? Uh, find a new argument. So um, I guess they yeah. were. Uh, challenging uh, your mm -hmm. approach today if you want to respond yeah. feel free. well you got to be more open-minded you got to understand what are the issues here you know i think you are wrong about what you're saying the issue here it doesn't matter what this whether it's book we you, you should just look at it as book a and book b a man 1400 years ago was able to identify six problematic errors in this uh, you could say anonymous, you could say this arbitrary book. It doesn't matter if it's the Bible or what it is. How did he know what those errors were and how was he able to provide better answers? There's right. nothing wrong with asking that question to an atheist. There's nothing wrong with asking that question at all. So you got to, I think, be a little bit more open minded. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Well, that's the end of another debate. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming right. to check this out. I'm going to. Um, dismiss our debaters briefly and i'll be right back um in about like 20 30 seconds right, um, and and we'll just have a casual chat of our own for a few minutes um, and then we'll head over to the after show so
Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.